just when I think you couldn't possibly be any dumber, you go and do something like this. And totally redeem yourself! What's up, Internet? It's back. We're back. <laughs> the three <laughs> averagely intelligent dudes discussing dangerous ideas. And uh, here we are in our fancy new fucking fly-ass setup. In What's person, good? You know, we welcome. got a John Allen here in the motherfucking flesh. How's yep. it feel to be in Los Angeles? Oh, my goodness. Uh, you know, I, I feel I feel at home. <laughs> I feel well. like I'm back amongst my people. <laughs> yes. It's great to pull you out of the virtual screen and into <laughs> yeah, this room. Just reeled me out of Zoom. <laughs> Come on, buddy. Yeah. Get out of there. <laughs> It's so crazy. As I was setting up the podcast uh, now, I came across these different websites that allow you to do podcasts via, like, the internet. Like, hmm. we were just janking it for no reason. There's, like, these, like, legitimate sites that you uh, can, like, just, like, host plug and play. podcasts virtually. Yeah. And <laughs> Instead, we <laughs> were just going through Zoom, like, doing everything through OBS, recording, <laughs> editing. Yeah. We're just DIY guys. That's true. Though. I mean, that's what we do. That's yeah. very, very true. Um Okay, sorry. I had to just make sure that I kept recording everything because I didn't remember if I had stopped it earlier or whatever. Cool. Yeah. So, anyways, in our new in our new setup now, um, we're just gonna be checking out the internet a lot with you guys and uh, staying on top of our current events, of course, and uh, talking about other philosophical ideas as well. So, if you're into um, dangerous ideas, then this is definitely the podcast for you. Yeah, we're gonna be talking about some wild stuff. We always do. We yeah. always get mm-hmm. into it. Uh, you know, we got a little conservative energy. We got a little liberal energy. You know, we yeah. just bring a we bring the special sauce. Yeah, yeah, we got a good mixture of all types of like walks of life and like ideologies and stuff and uh it's cool today what do you want to talk about besides the crazy end to this bucks and heats game <laughs> yeah which was incredible yeah I really not, not to mention that i believe the lakers are playing right now right now I, yeah i'm, I'm pretty oh, sure they're playing right now. well let's not turn this into a watch along of yeah, the no, nba no, no we're gonna watch it later it's all good <laughs> i mean I'll fuck around and do it right now. <laughs> dude, I've been getting into basketball so much lately. Like, yeah, let's good. talk about that. Dude, it's let's been talk incredible. About this, this guy's personal basketball he's been, journey. He's been playing basketball three times a week for yeah. a couple of weeks now. Like four. Dude, I'd be thinking about going out there twice a day sometimes. <laughs> Get them two a day. I got this bug. I just, okay, so obviously I'm not trying to like play or anything. I, Mac called me out. I don't actually play against anybody. <laughs> <laughs> he shoots around. I Personal shoot around. Growth. He's it out is. there, yeah, putting up start the reps. That's what it is. Yeah. It's like uh, I was looking for next year to start some type of discipline, you mm-hmm. know, like where I could like, dude, you see a lot of these guys are doing martial arts all the time or yeah. boxing or something that involves like they say your mind and but then also your body and stuff. So uh, the way I saw it, I was like, it's a discipline. You know, it's something for you to like practice getting good at things especially if you've played basketball but you've never like dribbled with your left hand right or practiced your you know specific drills or something like i've played basketball but i've never sat there and been like oh let me make sure i dribble with my left into the corner and try to hit this three it's just been like me and the boys yeah just like hit the bone yard you know what i mean (laughs) (laughs) no dude i'm glad i want to talk about that because that's huge about it and that's what i said it's like for me i started looking at it as not just a game but a pile of skills right Mm. and like you said there's a skill of dribbling but then there's a skill of dribbling with your left hand too and then there's this shot and that shot and it's dunk. so it's just i took it on as like a discipline rather than martial arts and like all that stuff uh i watched that goddamn michael jordan documentary yeah, man that everybody. shit changed Saucy. my it's life I'm gonna, I'm gonna hold off until the lebron one ah, it's not gonna be, we'll be like that one <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean it'll be a good documentary i'll, I'll be excited to I'm watch sure. it from a cinematic standpoint, I'm sure they'll get it. And I mean, it's an interesting story. It's going to be even interesting more interesting tales. when, you know, his son's playing in the NBA and Pops is still mm. in like his 20 and still second hitting. year, still yeah. like MVP. He's really doing that Tom Brady thing with it. And he's just going mean, like, to like. We're 17 keep, years right now. And there's playing. a very real possibility that LeBron James becomes the MVP. I mean, he's still got like another five on him. Easily. Six. Easily. Easy. Yeah. Sports science. You seen that man dunk way. the other night? Easy, bro. Come on. He's got I mean, a couple more years. And I don't you don't know. just lose that. And he's getting more hair as he plays so i just <laughs> he's regenerating his hair he's, he's like, go, they're he's giving go, him the special sauce he's, he's been playing time but um 
so yeah i watched that i watched that docu and then i i gotta admit that that probably played a little bit in on the idea of like starting to play a lot of it yeah because well, i, I weren't you talking about basketball at all <laughs> until that documentary came out <laughs> did you, you play pick up games down in uh no 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 nah, nah, i've nah. never been in no i'm saying like recently like all. down in uh Santa. Oh yeah, yeah. So I was I was playing around with my nephews. Okay. My nephews are are they're big children. into basketball. <laughs> yeah, that's children. true. But I mean, I was coaching them, and that's definitely how I first first got into. That's true. Yes, playing that's true. He all. was doing that before like, before any of that, and then and then it was the docu, which the mindset shit really sucked me in, and then it was Michael Jordan highlights, which yes. let me tell you something. Well, I don't care if yeah. you like basketball or not. You need to watch Michael Jordan. Yeah, highlights. Watch watch <laughs> you some Michael Jordan highlights. Even <laughs> even I uh, truly uh, you know. I'm a fan of Michael Jordan. Let's not get yeah. it twisted. I just yeah. think LeBron James. Like, let's not get into that argument. I'm just a yeah, big you LeBron don't James want to put fan. That idea out loud. Let's, <laughs> let's go ahead and just say that. I respect <laughs> Michael Jordan. His, some of his highlights, man. Sometimes you see some of the stuff he did in these games. And yeah, he's just like blown it's away. Just like, doesn't, it doesn't make wow. any sense. Like he was that good. And those jump shots, like in the he help. can fly. He literally can like eleven. Levit- like I never seen a human being with a double jump. <laughs> like, yeah. like yeah. you see that in games like, yeah. you can like double, you can cheat and do that just halo, right? j- jump in the air and I don't never see nobody do that yeah, extra air yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've never seen it so then yeah it got me into it but now I'm just like dude I love going out there and it's like a workout for me you know so you get your you know you get sweaty you get you know breathing hard playing and you get to just practice all these different little skills you know like little like dribble this way hit this jump shot I'll go out there and you ain't leave until you hit five for three pointers in a row. I sit there and shoot left-handed free throws. You know, just and it just got me. I just like it. I can see how anybody would get sucked into something like that, where you just feel like yeah, you're obsessed with it and you just want to practice all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a discipline. <laughs> yeah, that's how they go. Usually, I mean, um, like you said, a lot of people have different disciplines but uh, finding something that you can continuously improve on no matter what like even when you reach the pinnacle of that discipline there's actually still more to go above that and like that's something that I think obviously they teach that a lot in martial arts but all of it, I think that they teach that in every discipline yeah. like there's always more recipes to invent that's true. or there's always more you know um podcast topics to talk yeah. about Dude, like i mean that you know like so like you you get there's never a time when you feel like i've done it you yeah. know like i get I'm, that i have done basketball <laughs> it is finished <laughs> i get that mental repetition and that mental rep in when i when i play magic yeah. you know magic the gathering and you build decks and you yeah. feel like you're getting to be a better deck builder and you go out there and you mm. practice and you try out these new ideas what yeah. if i do less land what if i right. do this aggressive you know what i mean like you mm-hmm. get to play in that space where it's like you're getting reps just like you're shooting a basketball mm-hmm. and you're like trying to hone that craft yeah. like that discipline so i i really do and i know it's like anything chess you know you could really yeah any anything with a strategy i think you can constantly try and perfect the strategy but mm-hmm. see now my question to you though was do you ever feel like that's limited though by the game because i felt like that when i was playing the league of legends like card game was that and i mean maybe because it's just an amateur card game you know where it just doesn't have enough you get strategic you get funneled in a bit yeah. but for the most part mm-hmm. with as many variations even in the smaller formats of the game it's mm-hmm. there's just so many different viable yeah. things it's it's the customization is endless to where you never feel like you've you've figured it out like there's mm-hmm. never a sol- there's been a solved format like yeah. once or twice in magic it's mm-hmm. just not a thing they ban yeah, like cards and they check anything, they, yeah. yeah there's no real form it's not like i know i have to put 20 yeah. mountains in this deck to win mm-hmm. N- it, people write some of the my, i'm of. a big fan of a man named patrick chapin and yeah. this man's r- wrote multiple books about magic yeah, and is if the things that he was writing about 10 years ago apply today yeah like it's like these concepts are, it's just yeah. like he's like the go. newton of magic right yeah, yeah, yeah <laughs> it's yeah. like chess or go or any sort of thing right. and it only Where gets bigger mm. it's mm. only adding more cards yeah mm. only adding fresh ideas yeah, so it's cool. like it gets more and more and more yeah. there's no end to it yeah that's cool mm. yeah i see that's just anything like that i think is cool now my, my next question was do you play to to sharpen skills or do you play I build decks purely for to like dunk on your own no. <laughs> I, I would say as a, as a deck builder and the people who would know me from my magic scene back home would know me that I'm, I'm more known as like a deck builder. Oh, it's okay. more like I want to see if I can make an idea come 
to life. That's definitely a, my favorite part about card games mm-hmm. in general. Like we played a lot of Pokemon, obviously. And, yes, uh, dude. I my loved, favorite part is building, building the decks. Yeah, yeah. 100%. <laughs> like yeah. I'll build a like I you build a really good deck and you play with it for a while and then you're like. I want to see if I can build something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> like yeah. even though you yeah. have something that's if really it smashes, good, if it smashes, then you're just like, all right, let me try some something completely some weird. Thing. This is I'm cheating. Yeah, obviously I'm cheating. <laughs> yes, and that's the same thing in the other game too. But I felt like you said they were like funneling, like there was a good strategy, you know, and like or like mm-hmm. a good set of decks that everybody would run yeah, based on like what they knew and stuff. They probably only have like a, maybe like two, three hundred cards too, something yeah. like that. Like mm-hmm. you know, yeah, you're talking it's about. True. It's true. Magic gets a you know two three hundred a set. And That's they get crazy. Five yeah. six sets a year, yeah. mm-hmm. and then you have formats that have mm-hmm. thirty forty sets in them. But this happens in anything where there's like a controlled arena. Too. Dude, it's kind of funny you were talking about this in your stories about freedom versus regulation or whatever. But did you watch that video? No, I didn't actually. You gotta watch that video. Okay, let's pull it up. Yeah, but, um, go to Instagram. Um, what was I saying about that though? I don't know. Oh, okay. okay. So when you were, like you're saying that they ban certain cards and stuff to keep the game afloat. Yeah, right? the same get too with impressive. like you watching the NBA is different from what I think of as basketball. Like I said, when for me it's just like how many, how do I perfect the skills, right? But the game, as we see now, it's like it's filtered into like three pointers, right? Like you mm-hmm. you have to build around this like three point. Uh, threat that yeah, used to not the, exist. Yeah, the other team's right? going to be yeah, exactly. doing so, these three. Exactly. So you so got to try to keep up pace. playing for winning, it changes the dynamic of stuff. Like, you can't just be like, well, you know what? I want to be a layup kind of guy. <laughs> it's no. like, uh, if you're really focused on winning, then... Uh, I think that you can... It's no surprise that the Spurs dynasty began to fall apart. I'm not saying this is the only reason, but it's no surprise to me that the Spurs dynasty began to fall apart or decline as those players got older and the system was not being changed even though the NBA was because in those years that's when the the increasing in the amount of three point shooting took in place yeah. and then people like Steph Curry are coming out yeah. and um, it's uh, if you just go to John Stossel you can to where? John Stossel and um, how do you spell Stossel? S-T-O-S-S-E-L I love this guy's fucking content. It's the greatest. It's the first one. Today, more than half the world's poorest people live in sub-Saharan Africa. Why? Why is it that most of Africa stays poor while other parts of the world prosper? People have lots of theories. Clean water is simply hard to find. The present-day problems of the African continent are tied to its colonial history. But I say Magat Wade's explanation makes the most sense. African governments simply have too many rules. Once you hire someone, good luck getting rid of them for any reason. Then there's taxes. The tax code is so complicated, some people say it's worth at least two or three truckloads of paper. Wade started this lip balm company in Senegal. Some ingredients she needs are not made there, so she imports them. But the government makes that expensive. Some of them have a 70% import tariff on them. So and it almost you, doubles the price exactly. of them. Exactly. Many people then escape the tax by paying bribes. We hear about African corruption. People Damn. complain about corruption mm-hmm. as if corruption is a root problem. Mm-hmm. I say no. Corruption is also a natural consequence mm-hmm. of stupid, senseless, idiot laws. There would be just that. as much corruption in America if we had these rules? Absolutely. The only way to fix corruption is to simplify. (laughs) Wade's business survived because she was fortunate. I'll agree with everything this woman says. (laughs) I went to see the head of... Well, I mean, him too. He's like, so will you do some stuff? Like, he was being awfully suggestive with that question. (laughs) No, he does that, like... It's, he's funny like that. He'll sarcastically ask people questions just to see how they'll respond. Like, are you saying that we would do something like this? <laughs> She's like, absolutely. Just as much corruption in America if we had these rules. <laughs> I know, like, like we're somehow lacking in corruption. Yeah, like, <laughs> and like yeah. we're lacking yeah. in idiot rules. This is a great one here. The only way to fix corruption is to simplify. <laughs> Seems like a, a good <laughs> statement to make. Absolute gibberish. There's a million ways to fix corruption. <laughs> Simplifying could help. It's true. That's if she says one of the ways to fix corruption would be to streamline and get rid of some of these rules. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or you could just, you know, there's other ways to fix corruption. Is the point I'm trying to make. No, I'm okay. not a corruption specialist. Well, let's let I'm her. just saying she ain't no motherfucker. Well, I think, what she's, I think what she's really trying to say is like to fix like the root problem, like in the way, in the same way that there wasn't a 
a foundation for organized crime until they made alcohol illegal yeah and then you build this underground like once you make that that one law alcohol becomes illegal and then you set up the entire foundation for the mafia just a few decades later on organized crime Mm -hmm. and so like anytime you have regulations like that that may automatically makes an opportunity for For corruption to come in because people are going to want to get around that I mean, I see what you're saying, but like, you can apply that to like gangs and selling crack, and there's no corruption in there. It's just mm. a gang working efficiently selling crack, and yeah. it's like, what's what's the corruption? It's against the law, you know. Like, mm. I guess, I guess that's what yeah, you're no, saying. No, no, I, I, I don't know. Well, I'm not saying that that's regulation. correct. I think that that's what she's saying. Like, the root of corruption comes from, she, in her mind, that comes from having too many rules that people want to get around. And I was just saying, I could see that. Like, as soon as you make a rule and there's anybody that wants to get around it, that could lead to corruption. Well, not it, that it does, but it could. We haven't let her finish her thing yet either. That's but true. at the same time, um, I, I would I maybe argue that they have the rules there in order to facilitate their corruption as well. Like, mm. you know, like you said, it, it, it it's hard to get like, paid for something that you can't you pull somebody I mean? over it for. It seems like it's like a give and take right here where they want it to be stringent as fuck so they get paid. And or possibly you Maybe. can just which give one was there first the corruption or the, the rules? The, well, that's the rule. what we that's gotta find, we gotta out. find out. Where where the rules come from? Because <laughs> the rules come after like the he said too. Like we can say, apply this to the crack, right? And it's like, but that isn't just like a needless rule per se. That's like a, a law that you kind of appreciate. Um, you could oversimplify. It. That's over, just simplify it. Get rid of <laughs> all, get rid all the laws on drugs. And then we just and have legal have no crack. corruption. And no corruption. And they just streamline <laughs> crack That's selling gang. There's no corruption. In that, that instance, you're right. In that instance, you're right. Because I was going to say, well, Portugal did that. But they didn't do that. They actually changed the laws from on drugs from being criminal the to being... The centers that help you allow you exactly, to use drugs. Allow you to like use that, drugs yeah. while you... To fill the void that you're trying to use drugs to fill yeah. inherently but also helping but you get back on your feet you. well, yeah, which brings like, us to your topic yeah you can't just <laughs> how just hard are you willing to work to make it easy for yourself Ooh, <laughs> yeah. I just, this this video is yeah it's okay little, let's go yeah let's go. the only way to fix corruption is to simplify wade's business survived because she was fortunate to find a helpful bureaucrat I went to see the head of customs <laughs> and we started looking together he didn't demand a bribe we found a clause in one of the Binders saying actually, if you're exporting at least 80% of your products, and if you've been in business for two years, then you can ask for an exemption. You survive through a loophole, but that takes connections and time. To exactly, get each exactly. Time. I imagine the leaders of these countries mostly mean well. What they see, see what how <laughs> damaging this is. Why do they impose all these rules? I am not so sure that all of them get it. Look at the UN, the Sustainable Development Goals. The UN's development goals include things like inclusive and equitable education, climate change, and gender equality. There's no mention of rules that kill business. We have chains around our necks, no one is seeing it, and then they want to come talk to me about inequality. We need greater economic freedom. Simple rules that everyone can yes. understand. Yes, but that, that diagnostic is known by almost no one. It should be no. If you just look at the rest of the world, you can see what's worked and what has. Wade <laughs> just made this movie about it. <laughs> Why is it that uh, a couple of decades ago, you know, China was at the same level as most African countries? Countries like Singapore made it. Countries like Hong Kong made it. Even uh, a place like Dubai, bare land of sand, des- desert sand, and all of a sudden, within 12, 15 years, Dubai, one of the financial centers of the world, and you're like, uh, what? What happened here? John, you thought something might have happened here? Hey, you seem like you have something to say. Yeah. I got quite a few things to say about go this ahead. bullshit. Yeah, get right it right there. Bro. Get it right there. <laughs> what about that? Like, what, okay. do, what do you think about the difference between Senegal and Hong Singapore. Kong? Singapore, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what she's saying is, if you don't have skyscrapers, you yeah. haven't made it. Mm. Uh-huh. Mm. That's that's basically the whole point here. Well, I don't think she means that necessarily. I think she means economics for her whole. I think I think he's more. Well, he's the one that's making the. He's making the point. Yeah, yeah. Because if you look at the point that he's made, he's like these people. uh, Yeah. I mean, I feel you. I just because we kind of realize she's also of the wealthy percent of her. Like there's just a lot of claims. You know, like run it back into to where I can see these captions. Yeah, because there's a lot of claims here. Everyone has a rule. 
He's saying that come talk to me about inequality. the way you fix Africa is simple rules. That's mm. all. Just simple rules. No, simplifying rules. Like, take it, like um, uh, stop the extortion that's happening in their government level through tariffs and taxations and fucked up, you know. So what this you is some sort of UN thing, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. they were talking about. What they the, were using that as an example of showing you what kind of. She was saying like the demo, like the the politicians don't quite get what they're doing, making this claim that they don't understand the unintended consequences of the policies that they're making. And she's you using the UN as an example of how politicians do this. I think, but like where they think that they're helping, but they're not helping because they don't really realize that what doesn't the really is. like get yeah, like yeah. that's yeah, not like see, a thing. That, that doesn't look like uh, Africa law like where where she's from like what's I, i'm not sure i missed where she's from in africa. Senegal. senegal i thought i heard that so that's not talking about the rules in senegal she's saying look at the un sustainable development goals mm-hmm. look at what the what, what the, what the UN, un wants to do mm-hmm. and it's like are you you're not showing me the senegal rules and all she's saying this whole time is the senegal rules it's a truckload of paper and it's like they're no, not showing she said me. that she you get to t- oh, go back because they were seventy percent eighty percent yeah seventy percent taxation on some on of the ingredients that she has to import on yeah like that's oppressive as hell and then if you want to get around these ridiculous seventy percent some of them have seventy percent tariffs on them this is yeah but I'm I'm not seeing any actual like evidence presented either it's just like some of these things have uh really well, high attacks I mean, they're just some talking about this one video. girl yeah, yeah it's just a video I mean, of him interviewing this woman though. admitting this is like a scientific <laughs> study thing, right? yeah, it's like just it's this woman's ideas <laughs> the, on her oh, home country of senegal yeah. and africa's laws it just doesn't seem like a legit news source to me it's like it's, it's from instagram it's not, it's, it's yeah, not it's news not, it's i know but it's trying <laughs> but it's trying to be news though right no so like he's just are you making content yeah are you calling out this man's bias or something because I'm, I'm sure he does yeah i mean just, yeah, every he's legitimate a news so what, what are the has. lessons from africa that we need to simplify the rules and that's the only way to well, get rid of I, corruption no i definitely feel like she's on her track here though because nobody talks about this but one of the reasons that those countries well, tend to stay so poor is because their politicians rob them constantly like just, they constantly just let the video okay. finish just All let right. the video finish right. i mean she'll she'll have more time to explain well, what she's I talking thought he was about gonna say some good shit about because I, I have some good points about this too in the sense of like comparing them to why does everybody want to compare themselves to China recently? Like well, China's a really good example. What she's saying is that China, lots of places in China were doing very, 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 very bad. Very bad. And mm. then when China started, she's making, she's not doing becoming a good job. Becoming more capitalist. Yes, exactly. Yeah. When they started opening up economic freedoms, it started becoming much better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, my counterpoint There's that I was going to make. There's just as much corruption in economic freedom as there would be in, like, communism or any of mm. these authoritative governments. There's going to be plenty of corruption in there. But even when you open it up to the free market, there's going to be corruption in there as well. Like I, I just don't really get the premise of the video. What, what I want to well, know. Well, you're what taking it's it at its face because they're trying to say explicitly they know that doing this is going to solve corruption. Whereas what we're trying to get you to do is just look at it like that's a possibility. Like we're just taking their information and looking at it from our from our point of view. We're like you know like I'm just like I'm not saying that I like think that if you simplify Africa's rules then all of a sudden all the corruption will go away I'm just it was an interesting video that's what she's saying yeah this is just an interesting video that talked about some things that I never heard anybody talk about Africa before yeah like nobody's ever talked to me about Africa's economy before no 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 no. they always just say like like, they need help yeah Yeah, that's all I ever hear she's gonna get to that later but like and honestly the the, the second half of the video is really the part that I wanted to talk about yeah well I was, or the part that I thought was I was going to stop and make this point, still trying to make this one, about how the fact that Singapore and Hong Kong also had a lot of influence from economies outside of their own. You yes, know, of like, course they were Same colonies, thing with like yeah. Dubai, too. Like, you know, these people didn't just build up on the fact... I mean, I guess that's what she's saying, if they had more ability to interact with the free market in the sense of like buy supplies from America or other places then they could maybe build like they Mm -hmm. have but I just think about like how much like Hong Kong was owned by the British for like a long time so Mm -hmm. like those types of influences I think are different from Senegal's necessarily there's like a major hub Compared to like you know, yeah, on, the, on the, ocean. In the middle of the fucking right, con- yeah. right, as like, opposed to like a, right. a desert and so African city. So for her city. to make the blanket like, 
Yeah, it's just comparing open, some. This yeah. is why I don't uh, like the like comparison that. between countries. Is, Me neither. I said right, this a lot yeah. when we were talking about yeah. COVID. I'm like, you can't compare Italy to COVID or to America when it comes to COVID because the cultures are completely different. So the people yeah. act differently, but also it's like the size of Rhode Island. Yeah. It's like not even a like a tiny little pinprick yeah. in this in this in when you compare it to the United States. Yeah. So like it, it just doesn't. Well, that's work. why I was laughing. Why does everybody want to compare themselves to China? Because that's what I've heard a lot of people lately too. Is like, well, China locked the COVID situation down. Look at these split, and I'm like. Let's let's not like, no. you know they're we can't well, put your people's doors yeah. shut too. Yeah. It's different, okay? It's different. <laughs> like what how much do you want it? Yeah, and so Senegal is different too, but either way, I digress. We do need to let let's let's continue to let her make her points here. Says to set up and be ran no be Oh, hold on. She said, yeah. Des desert sand and all of a sudden within 12 15 years Dubai one of the financial centers of the world and you're like uh, what what happened here they understood if we do not work hard to make it easy for businesses to set up and be ran no businesses is gonna come but international aid organizations have a different solution they say the nations of the world need to send more help governments already send 50 billion dollars a year to Africa Mm. And companies promote themselves by donating. What if I started a shoe company and every time I sold a pair of shoes, I gave a pair away? These kids will have shoes for the rest of their life. Tom's Shoes has donated 93 million pairs of shoes. Do you know that we have 230, I think 232 shoe making small businesses? Each one of them hiring directly at least 15 people. In this little village? Yes. So when you buy your shoes in the US, and pairs of shoes are being put in a container to be shipped over to my village, shoemaker has now to close the doors because who can compete against free? This man's still in business, but it's a struggle. I know it came from a good place, I get it. But can you just think further down the road? Unless you think that we really sincerely have nothing, including even shoemakers. And I think that's terrible. To heal in such a way that has no end. Yet Tom's Shoes, two-for-one deal, is popular. One company started it, did so well with it, with a buy one, we're going to give one mm. for free to poor people. But now you're seeing it with tampons, you're seeing it with soap, you're seeing it with everything. It would be better, says Wade, if Westerners encouraged African governments to stop strangling their own entrepreneur. If I have a job, then guess what? My malnutrition problem goes poof. My even access to clean water goes poof. <laughs> you know, it just poof, 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 poof. But without jobs, millions risk their lives trying to get to richer countries. Some of my most entrepreneurial people who are right now serving as fish food at the bottom of the ocean because there is not enough jobs. And why there is not enough jobs? Because the business climate sucks so much that people like me can't do their work of creating companies and jobs. Many of those deaths would be prevented if Africa just didn't have so many dumb rules. And that's the one inequality we should talk about. No one talks about it. An equal playing field of rules. Yes, yes. Let's create greater economic freedom in all countries, so that all people everywhere get a chance to free enterprise. Mm. John's just twitching over here. <laughs> this guy's just <laughs> fucking buttering your biscuit. Yeah, it really, it triggers He's, the shit out of me. Uh, we can tell why. Triggering the shit out of me, man. What I just don't like this? any of these claims because I don't see, like, like you said, it's Instagram. It's a five minute video on Instagram. He's not yeah. going to source his claims, so right. he gets to say whatever he wants and so present we. it at we are not presenting as a news source we're not giving you lessons from africa this is a news source this is not a news source this is a podcast long i'm form. pretty sure people Dude, get to decide where they get their news from all right all right all right but all right, even all right. if like i'm just saying like he's not a news guy all he's right. just on instagram making content yeah like i don't see how this is any different than <laughs> like the guys who do it on tv <laughs> they spread around the same dumb bullshit too i feel like and I've never heard any of them source anything. Like, no, you're on, no, you're on no, video. No, like, no, how, like I see like. sourcing in articles and stuff, but, like, I don't... 
No. But they're talking about real ideas here that I can discuss all how, day how about long. The, how about the don't give uh, poor people in Africa who can't afford shoes free shoes because then those people aren't using their Africa bucks to pay Africa people. Yeah, um, I, I definitely saw that too in the sense of saying like, uh, why should we value the Senegalese business owner over the maybe 30 families that got free shoes? I get that. But... At the same time, like we would bitch and complain too if, um, like, say people came over to our country and were willing to do work for a cheap wage, and it was starting to undermine our abilities well, to get jobs. Then we might also bitch and complain too about, man, there sure are a lot of cheap workers out here that are stealing the jobs of that I would get if I could, you know what I mean? So I feel yeah. like that's what she's saying too, is in the sense of like, you know. Well, I think she's trying help. to make a broader point in the sense that yes, like. If you give away the shoes, even like to people, especially that don't, that can't afford them, because yeah, you're right. So like, didn't not they say everybody like can afford million pairs or something. Yeah, like that? Something not like everybody can afford to buy the shoes at all. So, like, giving them free pairs of shoes is nice. And, but I think what she's saying is that if you don't allow the, um, like, she's using shoes as an example, but like, if you don't allow the businesses to create then the economies never actually get a chance to develop and then we'll always just be giving them things forever and we know just from personal experience that just giving people things isn't the best even if you give it to 10 million of them yeah i mean i guess what you're saying makes some sense if you think about it like don't give them aid let them do it for themselves to an extent i mean that's what seems to be what she was trying to say that's but, what she was but saying, if you yeah. apply that to something like food and let's say there's like 93 million people that instead of pairs of shoes they need a meal right and it's like well we got cooks in senegal why <laughs> yeah. aren't they buying them they food? should go to the restaurants yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I, I i see it from both sides like, that's i'm kinda, not saying i agree with her i just think that that's what she was yeah, saying and i guess i mm-hmm. i just when i watch the video and i'm all those things are racing through my head like this tom's comparison is bullshit this is just one day for senegal i'm being a little too critical of this guy because the way he presented himself in the video is a little bit well like, no I think that instead of doing all of that like you were too busy trying to judge this dude and like get pissed off that he was spewing like propaganda that he made his content too yeah newsy. you know like, because like I said I think because you can make these there's a solid points like the fact about like all this stuff about they are Trump just talking about stuff that she has an opinion like, on like, yeah, this like, is none all of it's, great yeah. ideas but yeah. I think if we're too like you know yeah, no, that's a Good fair point. Stuff about like you know, what I mean, I, like, I was getting a little too much God into the, when we bring in the Nazis on this motherfucker. <laughs> you know, you know, and they're yeah, like, when we start, playing, <laughs> well, that's kind of yeah. It's I've been. But, I would love to interview a Nazi. I think that would be fascinating. So I, I do. I see some 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 solid points in this, and then some you know maybe it's just obviously like a bias like you know like i think it was like when we were talking about one time in the news episode he's like you have to be able to rip the bias away from the information True. you, you know what i mean able to watch like something you have to be able to take the bit of information that we need from this and which is the fact that like i mean i, I just thought it thought was of, interesting because nobody had ever talked to me about african economies before well like, it wasn't even a thing to their me. government corruption like that exists whether you yes, think it's, it's tom's fault yeah. or she's lying about it or or like whether you think the answer is more help or less the fact that the politicians of that country been getting rich and here's the thing i know about piracy you know because that's essentially what it is it's like any it's like any dictatorship or any government that's held up on a falsity you know what i'm saying where you're just faking it and saying you're the government but you're really just holding that st- that country hostage we know we've seen this thousands and thousands of times i'm afraid it could happen to our country you know it's like um that happens then you send help but then help doesn't help because the government just also extorts the help too it siphons you off know those what i mean like i said 50 billion dollars coming in yeah that's, that's a really just good point another about aid. chuck yeah. for you to just be like, hey we need more help man we need yeah my people need yeah, more help and we just keep stuff not, in it. don't have good oversight that Facts. aid could be falling into the hands of terrorists or, or something anybody, right? that's, yeah. that's, you know, that's a, it just opens up point. another extortion lane but i think not that i think that free economy or like unregulated business is always the answer but i think it's like we've talked about you have to have a balance you know Mm -hmm. if it's too tight then like she said you can't create businesses which in the end creates jobs you know that's Mm -hmm. true like people need something to do that creates wealth or something in the economy even if it's not their own maybe it could be exporting things to other places where then they could bring in more money reinvest to you know you know like that that stuff has to happen whether it be 
a, a communist version of that or a capitalist version of that, but economies do have to build. And if there's anything in there that's strangling it up and stopping it from happening, I think that that you'd see the effects tremendously on them, you know? Cause there's, you gotta ask yourself why, like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, why is there no bleed off? Like why is Akon just now coming in talking about Akon city and shit like that? You know? I forgot about that. Dude, it, 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 for me standing where I'm at, I just don't know Akon and them like that. That looks like a corrupted fucking thing if I ever seen one, you know what I mean? Why Clef John already did this? Yeah. Oh, yo. Why Clef John already pulled this move? Yo, for real. And you'd just be like, yeah, I'm about to build you a city and 60 billion and invest. It's just, I don't know. It's about to be the next Dubai, nigga. Yeah, right? <laughs> but that brings another good point, too. It's like Dubai and those places did that through the building of shit. You know what I mean? It's like they, they, they formulated themselves from a, a desert to the a financial capital of the if world. But this shit. village in Senegal yeah. had billions of dollars worth of oil yeah. money, yeah. they would probably have fucking skyscrapers. I agree with that. It, yeah. regardless of their levels of corruption yeah. like well i mean yeah that's well, yeah, true I mean, that's yeah. true yeah because you would just build big corrupt cities for you to like yeah, yeah. that's exactly what corrupt. happened to atlantic city and vegas and new yeah. york city <laughs> during true. the uh mafia times yeah. like the mafia owned like all of the construction in new york and they were there's actually a really cool netflix uh special documentary out right now it's like city of fear or something like that and it's all about new york and like the people it's like a whole nother documentary about how they took down the mafia in the 80s and 90s um but it talked about that like how intertwined they were into the systems that uh now i think what you were saying and i think what also i've heard mostly is that africans like africa's governments are more corrupted not from like crime organizations but from the politicians, politicians themselves, themselves yeah. that's what i hear mostly about is like yeah, poli- like political corruption um but i think that uh basically like you said it, it's a balance like you can't just let people do whatever they want yeah because then they'll, they'll just exploit people yeah they'll so just come like, in like, you just open your way for the outside corruptors to come to in, come like, in and just be like well i don't give yeah. africa just to, like just yeah. pave over all of this i want to fucking mall up here in yeah. 24 hours 100 um but yeah, like also having a lot of rules, like that. It, like, I mean, she said that she had to look through a binder to find a loophole, and like I know that our registrar, like, have you seen pictures of it? It just keeps growing every mm. year. It's like literally more books than most people read in their lifetimes. Mm-hmm. Is how many laws there are, mm-hmm. and so like if she's saying that there are more than that in Africa, I can only imagine. Like that seems ridiculous. Yeah, you know, I couldn't help but notice too that she was a lip balm company. I was just like, man, that's just d- if you couldn't pick any more irrelevant of a <laughs> of a like um a product in like my her, mind. I like her anecdote. She said she said uh some of the ingredients I use can have a seventy percent tear for this and I was like, Yeah, they're probably deathly chemicals that kill everything also, that are touching the catch, environment or some shit. Did you, you know? catch the like, loophole <laughs> that she used to get around that shit? Oh, a, a politician? <laughs> No, no, no. Well, yes, she said she went to heads of customs. I didn't, they I said didn't bribe that, him, but he, uh, he just helped yeah, me. They well, said, like, uh, he didn't demand a bribe. They, they, they looked together. He he looked into the laws yeah, for the first time. Yeah. That anecdotal <laughs> story, I don't believe that for wasn't, one That wasn't the second. part that, that was interesting. The fact that let's, say that, let's say that she did go to the head of customs, and he wasn't corrupt, and they did look into it together. Yeah. And they did find this rule this that said that if you did export exist. 80% of the products that you sell, then... You can get out of this, and you've been in business for two years. So that she's like talking about shoemakers that make shoes by Africans for Africans, but she's exporting eighty percent of her lip balm yeah. to other countries. Ah. <laughs> like That's it's, not even, it's not even lip balm, it's but like protect the African lips. lips. And the head of customs, he was ready for it. He was like, "You want to get these jobs out of Africa?" Yeah. And I bet you, if the if the head of customs, American dollars? if oh, the yeah. head of customs was not corrupt before, she's giving him lip balm money. Oh. I'm, I'm oh, willing to put money on that. I, I was thinking the same thing. I said, "Look." Nobody does anything for free, bitch. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's just telling me you got this man to come look for it. It's just a a hard fetch story. If your village is so big, you have 23 separate shoemakers that have 15 people working for them. That's like a town oversaturation. That's way more than a town. (laughs) How many shoe? How many? Shoe stores are there in like a big city, like a big city. Shoe stores or shoe makers? Because oh, I mean, there's like I guess we're, hundreds yeah, of apples shoe stores. stores. But, apples versus yeah. oranges here. Yeah. But I'm just saying, if her village is big enough to have 23 shoe makers. Plus Tom's. What? Well, they're not <laughs> making shoes there. I'm just saying, 
23 shoemakers in her village. She said it, right? Yeah. Then, oh, you clicked off. I was reading what she was. Oh, then then the head of customs, you're, but she, she waltzes in and the head of customs, right? Is this for her village? Is this for Senegal? Is this uh, for... You know, we don't get that information. Just, All we just get the head is of customs. the head, head of, of customs. customs yeah. I walked in and oh, he juggled. He was juggling some apples and it knocked over a binder. I <laughs> fell open to this page. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's just a. Well, I mean, stories. I think you're. I think you're making light of the fact that she had to tell this story in a short interview with this man. I'm just I, being hyperbolic because she, you know. Yes, like, I, I know. It's because you didn't like what she was saying. I, I did not believe what she was saying. It seems. Well, either way, I'm just saying like you're it making. Seemed, uh, like, like she's she that's not how she told the story the way you were describing the way she told the story is not how she's being hyperbolic story. about the story but she did say the head of customs i walked in and then he found in a binder a special loophole and there's a whole wikipedia page. <laughs> 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 it's very short though. yeah it's very it's very fucked but Mackie it's, it's saw. somebody yeah it's like private complaint including the establishment of several anti-corruption agencies, such as the Ministry of the Promotion of Good Governance and the Reactivated Court of Repression of Economic and Financial Crime. Uh, corruption is common. Let's see what's Hey, sourced. Abdullah Wade, that was the guy that she was talking about. Oh, nothing there. That, that was yeah, like... On. The investigation into former President Abdullah Wade. Yeah. From 2000 oh. to 2012, so 12 years. Oh, she was saying that he was making all of the laws and stuff, because, and then now they're, we're finding out that he was investigated? He started a new party. So he just ran for president and president over and over. I don't see... I don't see anything in here of consequence. No, this is just about him getting elected after Fred. Okay, let's see the criticism here. Allegations. Nepotism? What is that? Google it. Nepotism is when uh, it's like within your family and your circle, you give them all jobs and money. Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. For a goodbye present, he reported they get prestige <laughs> projects. The Acon City. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, huh. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> what is it? During the corruption charges levied against his mixed race son, Kareem Wade, yeah. Wade held a press conference at his home in 2015 in which he insulted and falsely accused his successor, Mackie Sal, of being a, quote, descendant of slaves and that Sal's parents were, quote, cannibals who, quote, ate babies <laughs> and, quote, were chased out of the village yeah. for cannibalism. Uh, he went on to say that his son will, quote, never accept that Mackie Sal is above him. And if slavery still existed today in this country, he would have sold Mackie Sal into slavery. Oh, my God. <laughs> That's a press conference oh, right there. Yeah, That's a, a press, press conference, conference right there. Trump got nothing on the fucking yeah. Kareem, Kareem Wade. Yeah. This man Wade? is a fucking he ass. And come to find out, this Mackie. has been a politi- the political um, move since the dawn, right? Eight, eight, my opponent there, ate babies. There's something yeah. about... <laughs> I believe That's Machiavelli said know. something about that in The Prince. I'm <laughs> pretty sure I read an article or a little section where he was like, oh, and if, you, if you're in politics, you have to eat babies. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or at least accuse your opponents. And in 2015, I mean, that's around the WikiLeaks time, you know? Yeah. He's... So so Senegalese no politicians were wise to WikiLeaks. They were like, I, well, listen, I you, everybody's using them. Everybody's <laughs> using the moves, bro. He's like, they, John Podesta <laughs> had emails of the Mr. Wade showing him. <laughs> Mr. Podesta had the emails. He That's was a, eating I'm not too baby. good at the African yet, but we'll work on it. Working, yeah. I start bleeding we'll into Native them. American. Africans, please yeah. tell this man how terrible is African. Uh, yeah, for real. Right? Yeah. African. I had a good conversation was, with someone about this. this dude. Uh, I remember this, dude. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the voice actors are being changed now. So it's like, you gotta like stop finding somebody who does the accent and just find somebody who has the yeah, accent. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Pretty much voice acting that. is going to be ruined. Cartooning, <laughs> like if you're a cartoon character and it's like, well, a cartoon character is purple. But you know, people have been fighting against this for a while in the in the industry uh, because the industry is kind of bad about pr- proliferating stereotypes and yep. stuff. You know, um, I mean. It's hard because cinema tries to mimic real life, you know, and back and forth. But at the same time, it's like a story narrative of like what you think real life is like. Um, and so anyways, it is weird. It's interesting how like like Asians, for example, got real boxed into that Kung Fu shit. You know, it's like, yo, Asians do a lot more out here than just throw karate kicks. Wah! Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. but it's like, 
they couldn't catch a serious role it's to like save their what, life. You know? It's 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 like in our society now. There, it's we're we're being told that making a, a voice that's mm. stereotypical of someone who's not your race is mm. now racist. Yeah, mm-hmm. which I can't. So get that like one. the Cleveland show. It's like the right. main the main guy was a white guy and he was doing this funny voice that sounded like a black guy and was animated as a black guy. Mm-hmm. And now it's like, well, you can't do that anymore. That's against the rules. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't I don't necessarily know exactly where I stand on this issue. I, I see benefit from opening those roles to people in those positions. So mm-hmm. if you have a Native American character, you, it's good to give that role to a Native American person. Mm-hmm. That's authentic. I feel like that's great. I mean, I feel like that makes more sense to me. Yeah. But also, you know, where do you draw the line in that? It's one of those kind of, I hate slippery slope arguments, but it's like, what if you, the character looks like a Native American, but is blue? Mm. Or mm-hmm. what if like the Native Americans that come in aren't really as good as actors as the There's also that level people. of it too. Yeah. What if somebody what just can't like, do the job? Too. Like, what yeah, you can look, like, we don't just hire people based on like, oh, this guy looks like the guy. You also have yeah. to act. And acting right. isn't necessarily being the person in real life. It's, you know. so You can have a Native American character that doesn't act Native American. It's true, too. So then you wouldn't yeah. even have to be Native American to act like them. Right, right, right. What about but, those Asian guys with white voices that just have white voices? Like, if yeah. you want to yeah. categorize voices mm-hmm. as colors. We saw that Asian guy sing that Tim McGraw song. He yeah. didn't even speak English. Yeah, he didn't even he speak sounded like Tim English. McGraw. And he sounded like, oh, like my gosh. Straight out of Texas. Yeah. Oh, Look that up. Gosh, but yeah. also... What if real. it wasn't race? What if, let's say, you were playing Stephen Hawking? Mm. Would you, you have disabled to be person. disabled? Would you yeah. have to have the exact disease that he had? Mm. Yes. You because it, are you got to give the job to the guy with ALS? Definitely. Or what are you yeah. going to give it to an abled person? Right. Yeah. Like what is this? Well, I, that's I because I was on the fence. <laughs> that's the same wow, way that you were talking about it. That's big. And I was like, but then I heard Bill Burr talk about that. He was like talking i think it was a ben affleck movie or something like that and he was like how come they use ben affleck for that retarded guy that doesn't make any sense yeah. you should have got a retarded guy to play that guy and i was like damn yeah when you extrapolate that idea that yeah. whole idea that whole logical concept if you extrapolate that out of the con just the box of race it makes zero sense it makes zero sense well when you do ability and disability like if you're gonna have a voiceover of a big person it has to be a big person yeah. Like, that doesn't make yeah. any sense. Or, like, if, yeah, that's true. The ability right. disability one is kind of a stretch because it's like, well, if they're incapable physically exactly. of doing the role, then it Dude, doesn't. I have, uh, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. No, I was just kind of making the point that, like, if you want to say, like, oh, like, we shouldn't have a white character play a black character, yeah. it's a little bit different in overall theory than an abled person versus di- disabled person if that disabled person can't do the actual job mm. you're yeah you're comparing mm. the two different examples that we said and yeah. i was just talking about if you take that logic into any other example it, it breaks down mm. i think it would be the same like you're using the disabled one but i think it's the same for person like like i said if you have a big person in the animation voiced over by a small person is that bad because mm. now you're like being sizest yeah well, if they're able-bodied, I guess. I'm just stuck on this idea that, like, a disabled person, like person who right, can't you're do the, job, the disabled yeah. thing. But, so, like, so but I, it, it, it doesn't work in any other category. I don't agree with it yeah, in any other category. It's like, why, if I'm if I'm playing a fat character and I'm skinny, like, that's mm. Well, that's then why crazy. are you, like, is race more important than any of those other things? I'm not arguing these things. I'm oh, yeah, bringing these things up. To, to the because same. I don't believe that we should fire the guy who plays Cleveland and replace him with a mm. guy who looks like Cleveland. I thought he left though. Didn't he choose to leave? He did. I think he did mm. the right thing. Uh, he like stepped out. Yeah, because it's like a controversy and if he doesn't want to be a part of that and he doesn't want to take a stance, I would back away too. Like, yeah. So I was in high school and I had to do um, Of Mice and Men with mm, somebody yeah. and the teacher casted Lenny as an autistic kid in our, in our school. right? Mm-hmm. And I was extremely uncomfortable with this at first. You know, I was you like, had to act with him. Yeah, I, so it was me and him playing this. Like, it was just doing a scene. I forget what scene it was, and I. It's the one where he like crushes the mouse or something, right? Oh, and, okay. And so I read the role. I never even heard of it. I read the role, and then she, you know, tell me I'm gonna do it with. The, I can't remember what the kid's name was. Sweet kid, dude, great kid. And I remember at first just being like, "This is unreal. Like, she's gonna have this kid play this kid." You know, I was like. I, I don't know why and so I even go to her and I'm like Miss Smith you know like I don't really I don't feel comfortable you know <laughs> and she's and like went to the teacher with that yeah dude That's I, 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 I would have just toughed even it out sitting, well, even sitting here thinking about it now it's like why did I feel uncomfortable about that you know what I mean like but 
you know, it's just weird. I felt like it was making fun of him, you know, mm, but it, okay. it's it, yeah. it's not though, you know, no. like that's the character in the in the book or in the play that we're playing, mm -hmm. and why can't he play that role? You see what I'm saying? Like, like why? And I think that's where she was coming from in the sense of not being like. Oh, this kid will be perfect for this. Maybe she was. Maybe she was thinking that because he would be. You know what I mean? Like if anybody was gonna get it, it would be this kid. You know? But um, she's like, no, it's fine. It's fine. Don't worry about. It. Don't worry about it. And uh, so sure enough, you know, and it probably was a little bit of my own reservations because I didn't really want to work with him. You know, right? Like, you didn't want to have to be put in a position where you had to interact with him. Yeah, like it was gonna be tough too. Like I'm just thinking, like, dang man, how am I gonna get? It? Dude, he smashed that shit. Yeah, smashed that shit. He could get every single line i got to know him he was so cool he would know everybody's birthday in the class every um, how he would he, he would just ask you he'd be like what's your birthday and you'd be like you know this and that and you're like okay 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 you just and remember it remember it yeah. and then you could just Steel ask him trap. Yeah, just every now and then i'd be like andy i think it was his name andy what's everybody's birthday that's cool i was like dang dude that's you're dope. you're epic bro and um we did that damn play bro brought tears to people's eyes let mm. him down he was I oh, mean, no, dude, I bet you he killed you them. Tend Nailed those it. Nailed it. You go tend those rabbits. Yeah, he was mm. good, bro. Mm. And, uh, That's a good play, too. And, uh, yeah, and you know what? And it taught me a lot about that whole scenario. I mean, I don't know what it taught me about what's right in the world or not, you know, in a sense of, like, should he be playing that role or anything? But mm -hmm. I learned a lot about myself in the sense of, like, you know what? If you're not going to be biased, then don't be biased. You right. know what I'm saying? Like, if then anybody can play the role he can somebody else can a black like whatever if if they do it and they can do it then they should be able to do it you know right. i don't think that you should seek that person out like oh we need to get a character who's like this you know mm -hmm. um cast cast the role and when you find the guy who you think is the best guy for your thing go with that because right. That was the best person for the role, regardless of if they are the biggest, smallest, whatever, tallest, fattest, skinny, blackest. Yeah. You know, that's what it kind of taught me. And I was like, because I, I was I mean, you just sure bring it down to, like, guy. merit, basically. Right. Like, right. hey, if he right. plays the role well. Yeah. Like, if, if they, they do, do it well. If he does it well, let, let him do it. Let him do it. You yeah. know what I mean? Facts. I and do. I think that that's kind of what you're saying is, like, you don't want, like you wouldn't want to pass up on somebody who would play the role better because you were looking to fill it with somebody who fit the persona of the role more? Well, it, it depends. It depends. Like, like if somebody... As a director. Because this is this is a sticky right, situation. That somebody in, else is film. like, like making that's your this own movie. creation, yeah. right? So if I'm a director, it depends. Do I value his look more or do I value his character as like how he's going to act and stuff? You mm -hmm. know? So it just depends on what I'm looking for. I think that's but, why it's more tricky in the animation like in the voiceover mm. sector of mm. acting and stuff because you don't actually have to look like the person. Right. Yeah, and that's where it leads into the having the problem. Well, like he was saying too about people that we started this with people mimicking the accent rather than mm -hmm. somebody who just has the accent. Right. Yeah. But there's a lot more to it. There's delivery. There's, yeah. yeah you know, there's just, just because you sound Asian doesn't mean you're going to be good an actor. You yeah. know, so, yeah, you know, I was thinking it, about like, okay, Robert Downey Jr. in the film Tropic Thunder. That was mm -hmm. hilarious. Who could have played, like that, that role in and itself mm -hmm is supposed to be a white guy pretending It'd to be, be a black, black guy, guy right yeah. so it's like w if you have a role like that yeah who do you cast for that does that it have to be a robert white downey jr does it does i would have loved to have seen them cast have been some black who, guy who would wear white face whenever robert downey you wasn't I mean? in like, black face that would be great we there's a lot of questions here a lot yeah. of ins and outs especially right. when it comes to like you said the cartooning and stuff because then that's comedy as well so it's like if you do a really funny voice this this gets me then it's like well then you go with the funniest God. Yeah, because yeah, like, yeah. that guy's killing this voice, man. Like, <laughs> he so killed that role. This gets me in a little bit in trouble right now on the internet, but I just think that this to be true. Um, I don't have a problem with the blackface. I have it when black people aren't allowed to play the roles. You see what I'm saying? So right. when white people were com like completely segregating black people out of the industry and then pretending to have to them black, as, yeah. as, you know what I mean? That to me was like, what the fuck is this shit? You know what I'm saying? Right. But this idea that like, white people should be completely persecuted because they're trying to pretend to be but i just don't i know i i don't like the culture appropriation conversation at all in right. any way mm, shape or form yeah, definitely so should separate like, cultural appropriation it, from like you know if you're it's all about intent these days i think personally people need to measure intent you know is this person trying to offend you or insult you you mm -hmm. see what i'm saying like do they dress up in blackface and then act 
demeaning in the role. You know what I'm saying? Like that's why I think it was Are they trying in, to make black people look bad, bad which is what they were then, doing back then. Right, what's exactly what they were doing back then. They were trying to make fun of black people yeah. and they were trying to make you look bad. And like I said, they were keeping you out, but then they wanted you in represented, but they didn't want you to be a part of it, so they wanted to pretend to be like you. All that's fucked. But the same too now people will say, well, it's the same situation. It's like, all right, well y'all say nigga now, right? And like it's changed you know it's like we've changed that word and now it's like different but it's not really different Mm -hmm. so you know it's just this weird idea of like well blackface represents everything that used to be then and i was like well how you get the word and you get to change the word and bring the word into everything now Mm -hmm. but then you the blackface got to stay back there and Mm -hmm. and so i just you know it's you it's a slippery slope obviously i know everybody won't agree with me here on this and that that's that's fine understand but I just personally, to me, I don't. I think it's all about intention. I know mm-hmm. when people are trying to tell me that they 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 hate me, or when they are trying to put me down based on anything, you know. And I can see when people are just trying to put on a good show or something. What, what about that? Uh, what, what was that film? It was like Malibu's Most Wanted or something like yeah. that, where mm-hmm. it's like the nerdy, well, not yeah. nerdy, but it's like he's trying so hard. It's like that's mm-hmm. the whole point. Is yeah. like and look they were at playing this, on a white stereotype. Yeah, look yeah, at this like caricature the, of the white guy who's trying to be black and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Is that something that that's like just? naturally going away from our society is that always going to be there you think because like i know that the general consensus right now in like left-leaning circles is that if you watch a movie from the 90s mm. you're going to see some stuff that's like off-putting to today's standard oh, for sure. right. just like if we watched a movie from the 70s or 60s you'd see something that might be off-putting 20 100%. years ago or something so do you think we're moving away from those kind of like stereotypes being like oh this is our comedy our comedy is this ridiculous cartoon Mm -hmm. of this thing that uh, everybody agrees is you know ridiculous or is Mm -hmm. it going to be like less race-based because that's that's i really think is what it comes down to is like that's race-based humor just like Chappelle's show just Mm -hmm. like white chicks or anything like that right you have these very specific race-based films that are like look at how funny it is for this white guy to act black or Mm -hmm. vice versa Mm -hmm. and uh i just uh, i don't know i would love to see that but see as long as we keep thinking that there's ideas of culture appropriation though then i don't think it is because like what if the white guy just that's just who he is he just fucks with that culture you know what i mean and that's just right that's just him and he's just being himself and, and we keep persecuting him we are making it a race thing it's like nope no 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 you can't you're not allowed to it, well, it's so so's not allowed to be this and you, you, can't, <laughs> you, you can't you're not you, allowed to do that you can't step over this line and you got to stay right there it's funny it's that like, they talk about diversity all the time but then say that you can't appropriate anybody's culture yeah it's like we want you we want to have a diverse cult amount of cultures around us but don't do anything that I'm doing well, and I'm not gonna do anything no, you're like you doing. gotta tolerate what I'm doing but you can't do it yourself there's like kind exactly. of s- s- situation. they're like we, we want to force everybody to be together but you're not allowed to act like each other mm-hmm. you're mm-hmm. not allowed to become similar in any way because yeah. then it would be too hard to separate you well, right. with identity politics it's about what Boy Scout badge are you wearing? Are you yeah, wearing right. the I'm a rape yeah. victim badge? Because then, yeah. you know, you have a certain amount of things that you can do. Or are you wearing the I'm an oppressed minority badge? Because mm-hmm. then there's then you can speak to those things. That's that's the kind it's of true. the problem with, like, Twitter on the left is, you know, and I'll specifically point at just Twitter on the left that I've seen personally, mm-hmm. is those identity politics run so deep that now you can't speak on issues. Like, how dare John talk about right. African issues? Right. He's not an African. Yeah, yeah, right. like, facts. And that's, that, I think like that's, you could possibly know anything no, about Africa yeah, yeah, if you yeah, weren't from right. there, and that's like uh, discounting any level of empathy we have as human beings to right. try and like yeah. you know or any knowledge you may have ascertained through non-African country means right. like yeah, uh, you know, I might have gotten this information from Switzerland facts <laughs> but I think that that's a, a part of the problem though is it's constantly proliferated in our society through film and movies and politics and everything and this is a black thing and that's a white thing and this is a this is for that and this is for this and this yeah. you know it, it well if people i think i posted a, a quote from sad guru and he was saying right now we understand borders as absolutes literal boundaries between people instead of just thinking as them as categories mm. ways of preserving historic like history and stuff mm. like that so yeah. like uh, like the Indian culture from India is very specific and it has specific things about it that no other culture has Mm -hmm. and some of them are really beautiful things Mm -hmm. and um, I think what he's saying is like me being Indian doesn't separate me from somebody who's Swedish Mm -hmm. just because we're from different countries we just have different cultures right now but Mm -hmm. especially in a place like the United States which is 
founded by so many different cultures all at once coming up the idea that you're gonna like keep them from co-mingling is very strange like the like it seems to me like if you really wanted to do that to the fullest extent you would have to keep like that's like anti-interracial marriage yeah, basically it's like anti- you can't let like because yeah. that's how it's mixing is mm-hmm. when people get together and it's then true. eventually they're gonna make babies and so like like that's what i was like what is my culture i don't even know what my Dude, culture this is. is where i get stuck when too. i was talking to the lady for the census bureau thing she was asking me like what ethnicity brody was and i was like Shh. yeah uh, she was like is she latino or latina sort and i was of. like she, she is, like but she's also black. Yeah, I, but she's also German I, and Filipino. She's everything. She's like everything. Yeah, yeah. I was like, what are they gonna do? What are you later? doing? Like, two how are you gonna come separate? together to make a third half? You know, she's a Caucasian Afro Latin X. Dude, seriously, <laughs> you know. And so that's is that the new speak word for <laughs> two plus. Yeah, is what two. <laughs> Brody is two plus. I saw that the yeah. other day on a thing. It was like all the more these different different races, <laughs> yeah. and it was like mixed race, and then it was like two or more. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, that's. See, yeah, okay. that's new. That's new. But we didn't have that. This is something always. that I wanted to mention earlier, but I let you guys go. Don't you see? Don't you kind of think? I'm kind. Of, I'm not gonna speak for you. I kind of feel like this conversation ties into the to the conversation about the video from Africa in what they were saying, and that if you make it simplified, that everybody can move along with their own sort of way of doing things, mm-hmm. which is kind of like what I feel like we've been dancing around here. Like, for one example, Facebook at one point had like over 26 different genders that you could choose from Mm. and then eventually they just put it to where you just type in your own gender Mm. they were like i'm not gonna have a a whole list of genders for you to choose from and have to stay up to date with it just type whatever you want in there there. be you Mm. and i was like that's a great example of what i think she was trying to talk about or at least what i would do or like what i understood what i took from that video was like if you have a sensible thing, like, we're going to let anybody be whatever gender they want, but I'm not going to try to box you into the ones that Facebook thinks is official or whatever. How does that relate to her, though? No, I'm just saying that the concept of simplifying something, mm. uh, she was talking about it in the sense yeah. of laws, and we're talking about it in the sense of, like, simplifying, Options. breaking down people's categories mm-hmm. that they can fall into, yeah. making it an easier way, like less friction points. Well, because like you said, they're using that stuff to define us. We even said right. in our census is like they want you to fall into one of these categories so they can, so category- they can decide figure what out their more numbers black and everything. Do, yeah. so that Edward what Bernays can in his sell you, office yeah, can exactly sell you exactly based point accuracy on your demographic. Yep. You know, it's like <laughs> I'm only going to run these ads on billboards in California because <sighs> I know exactly where my there's more black people. Yeah. Here and those black people like this, it's like get out of here. Just you know? playing that, with his that's dentures definitely his grave, fucking. Right, you know? And but, that's the beautiful thing about cultural appropriation is that now you can't look at somebody and tell what their culture is. Some, yeah, like you can't sure. look at a black person and assume that they adhere to the stereotypes because he might just be full blown French mm-hmm. and he's just a French guy and mm-hmm. he has nothing to do with Africa mm-hmm. and he doesn't do any black shit. Yeah. You know, like it's just like like you said, I think it's gonna I think the lines are gonna erase themselves the longer we go. Yeah. The, I mean I think they already started to, uh, but it's still all of these things are man made structures. Right. You know what I mean? Like we define the countries, we define we the, invented the all yeah. the boundaries. And so it'll be up to us to break those boundaries down. But I think we do that by making things less about that instead of more about that. Right, you know, exactly. it's like you got to stop defining things by people's color and let people just be who they are outside of that. It's, but we're always like, well, that's a black thing or that's a white thing. You can't speak a, on that. Uh, yeah, yep. you're, you're you not know. allowed to come yep. over here because you're not. Th- th- then we are literally proliferating the same segregation. White privilege. Like you don't need to be white to have privilege. You can be. There's black privilege people. There's uh, Asian privilege people. We're probably all privilege that we all live in America. I mean, when you, when you compare privilege. privilege to other privilege, then yes, everybody in America is so it much goes more privileged all, it goes than all, people in Senegal, for instance. It goes all those ways. And I just think it's not, I'm not shooting at Black Lives Matter or any, any other thing. I'm literally talking about all that. Demographics, stereotypes, the way that the movie industries and stuff approaches this stuff all that um if the more we make it less about that then i think it yeah. becomes less we have about to overcome that. our mammalian urges to simplify everything mm. um or categorize everything, categorize everything. Uh, because like that's that's what we yeah. had to do for for survival yeah and so as we be as we move further away from that end of maslow's hierarchy and the survival mm. aspect we have to 
remain cognizant that our evolution is not keeping up with that progress that we're mm-hmm. making and that's why i think we're seeing where you were you made a, a great point about earlier in the sense that we're watching stuff in movies from the 90s now that would not fly today mm-hmm. and if you watch movies from the 90s or if you watch movies from the 70s in the 90s there was stuff in there that wouldn't fly yeah. then and so we're that's just 20 year gaps uh, now think about it in the 50s to today it's mm. totally different like yeah. you could beat women back then that's and a I, huge difference and i don't <laughs> want to get off on a rant but i watched a movie two movies recently from 19 like 52 and from 19 like 56 and both of them made me extremely uncomfortable uh, yeah. in, in the way that they portrayed jewish people and yeah. the way they portrayed like man and wife mm-hmm. uh the way they portrayed black people there was one where it was like a day at the fair and it was like this comedy with like mm. the chaplains mm. or something like that i don't remember day at the races maybe is what it was called huh. but uh there was a dancing sequence at the end where it was the only time there was black people in the movie and they were doing like this whole big dance number because they the, it was like back when the Lindy Swingers were popular. Mm. Oh, I think so, you sent us this video. Yeah, and they the dancer, just yeah. did this amazing dance or whatever. It was ridiculously awesome. Yeah, and it's like the, the way they treated those people in that film, the stereotypes mm-hmm. they use, yeah, you know, the just... characters. He walks up and he's all his eyes are real big open. Man, it's like, time. I felt super uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. And it's like, now you things know you start end. looking at things like Ace Venture, a pet detective, when he's like kissing the the lady who's trans at the end. Oh and yeah, and he's, he's like everybody's, everybody's throwing up, yeah. and it's mm. like, man, that was only yeah, it's tough. Yeah, you, you know, would have never got away with that shit. No. It's true, early two thousand. And I think it's good that we've moved forward in a Me sense. Me too. Me too. Because it's like, Me too. What is wrong with that? Yeah. What's wrong yeah. with you kissing that woman and finding no, out that they're yeah, trans? Absolutely like, right. No. Now, and and the more we move, that's where we're gonna mm-hmm. lose some people in the audience because some people are gonna be like, that's a this or a that. Well, I'd also say that there's nothing like if you personally throw up. After finding out, I don't think that there's anything wrong with that either. Yeah, mm. but it's not like, like a I mean, you can't trope. really control that. Yeah, like the comedy trope of oh, I now I'm so disgusted. Like you never kiss your dad. Like come on, I think I'm just saying, like, I think yeah, that they I were playing like more on the like I, I see it's it was a very shallow joke. Mm-hmm. It's a very shallow joke, and I think that they're more playing on the idea of like. There, that was a very male-oriented joke in the sense that they were like, "We can get every man in the in the theater to laugh at this and joke." It's different, but we're saying it's different. Like you said, yeah, you would, you, as a as a filmmaker now, you would dare make that joke. You know, what yeah. I mean? right. like you wouldn't dare make that joke. And like you said, I mean, in real life, it just wouldn't get the laughs either. It, for it the most just part. It, would, it, would, it wouldn't. It would just cause a, a hum a humdrum. You know, but I well, think depending on what, what theater you showed it. Yeah, what? here in Hollywood, yes, it would get a humdrum. No, I mean, there's a lot of places that get hum. If, if they even sniff it out, honestly, if, if I watch that hear, movie, I still giggle at that. If, if they hear, it but I'm talking about the internet and whatever, it, it there'd be a humdrum. Oh, the hounds would be out. The, uh, they're they're gonna be, find they'd be that. For you. They're gonna sniff that and they're gonna they're gonna yeah. ugh that, which I don't like <laughs> that either. But things that lower your vibration: oversleeping, undersleeping, poor diet, no exercise, people pleasing. Excessive stimulation, gossiping, toxic friends, fueling drama, constant complaining, ungratefulness, and negative self-talk. I believe this to be the case. I can. I, I when I. I didn't disagree with a single one of those. Oh uh, no, dude! When I see people who are in extremely low vibrations, it's like they're stuck on all these. <laughs> I love that they put under sleeping on here too. Mm-hmm. Cause like some like people I heard be like grinders and shit, and they'd be like, "Oh, it's like sleep when you're oh, dead." Four hours, and I'm like, "Yeah, you'll die a lot sooner. You're gonna die sleeping. quick, my yeah, man. You gonna get that sleep? Yeah, your bitch ass is going to you know. sleep. Right. That's one thing I've learned about it's sleep. Pardon, you, you go sleep. It's, it's gonna, gonna like, get you. It gonna come back and get you. Like, yeah. There is no choosing not to. <laughs> <laughs> and after every like after I read that Why We Sleep book. So they can um, download all your information. I was that. just like, bro, <laughs> like we are all seriously under evaluating how much, like how important sleep dude, really uh, is. Dude, sleep is death. I mean, dude, I honestly I think it's the craziest thing in the world. Like you shut off the conscious part of your brain so that your subconscious can run free. And essentially, like, and I truly believe your subconscious to be like your spirit link you know like i think that's where if your spirit had a home that's where it lives in your subconscious mind and you go to sleep you turn off your part and you leave your spirit alone with your body like that's crazy to me and like you said i think that people can't even fathom how important that process is i think that's when the universe downloads all your information and 
refreshes you like you get a reboot i've always liked that analogy that it's you know the the computer program boot mm-hmm. up analogy mm-hmm. where it's like oh it's like defragging or mm-hmm. you know it's like running through its cleanup it's like getting rid of mm-hmm. things and that's why you think of random things in your dreams is because you're it's like being cleared from your memory banks essentially you know to make it simple and that's a cool idea but we don't know I mean, just nobody re- really knows. I mean, it's a great idea. Yeah, I, I like. You but know, even just like recharging your batteries. Yeah, you know, like your your kidney needs to like flush itself. Having out. rewatched <laughs> Century of the Self as mm-hmm. well, the Bernays documentary that we've talked about multiple times, mm-hmm. uh, that really made me think too about the psychoanalysis of dreams and things like that, mm-hmm. the Freudian aspect yeah. of it. So you know, we're we're talking about like, yeah, you know, you need to get your sleep because it's healthy, mm-hmm. but. Like you're saying, is it healthier for your mind too? Like, is that yeah. the real end product? Like, I we can see the physical of aspects of getting sleep. You look well rested, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. mentally, mm-hmm. like there, there's those effects there too. Yeah, that's I, the Freudian mm-hmm. side of things. Yeah, right, right. Where your brain's like trying to process everything that happened. I just think that there's some type of regeneration aspect. I mean, obviously, right? You know, it's like you feel tired, like your batteries are running low, yeah. and it's like then your body goes into like recharge mode. Um, but either way, I just think it's it's so underrated in society right now. Sleep in the sense, like not even just like like that post said, you're either doing too much of it or not enough. You know what I mean? Like everybody's either like it's a game that they want to play or it's there's I don't know. It's just weird. But the way we like operate around sleep, the same thing with our food, though. We do this with food, too. We do this with food, too. We just it's turned into all kinds of weird like you you. You don't just eat because you're hungry. You eat for fun. Yeah, just like sleep. Sometimes you're depressed and you're mm-hmm. sleeping because you don't want to face your real or you life. Sleep for fun. Or, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it's like, like I've, I've, I know that when I've had depressive episodes, that mm-hmm. I always fall into that cycle. Oh, of, for sure. Of you yeah. know, oversleeping mm-hmm. or staying or insomnia. For me, it's particularly insomnia. Mm-hmm. I have a hard time going to sleep, and then once I am asleep, even yeah, hard time waking up. Yeah. But usually, it, it comes in like they waves. seem like those go sun, like simultaneous though. Like you said, like they tie together. Yeah. So it's it that's why like being here live and in real life at the podcast and mm. being here, you know, staying with my my tribe, my little circle, mm-hmm. God, it's just doing that wonders, for doing you. wonders for every aspect of me, both mentally, physically, yeah. spiritually. I feel that all those things. I feel, I, I feel an improvement, and me I don't too. want people back home to be like, oh, you know, like I'm. We're not good know, enough for you. We're not good enough for you, John. Dang, or like, we know, oh, we North Carolina, not. North Carolina can't make you happy, and it's like. Well, you know, the things that make me happy right now are being around yeah. these people, yeah. these two good, right good here, image. and the rest of my little tribe, mm-hmm. and doing what I think I need to do with my life. And yeah. what I don't need to do with my life is work at a grocery store <laughs> ever again. <laughs> and I know that I can do these things, podcasts and things in North Carolina, but I can't get you two. If I can't get the two of you go back, like back to North Carolina, oh, then it's tough. Then it's, it's not tough, happening yeah. in North Carolina yeah. because this is what's happening. This little, this is what's, this is the sauce. This is the sauce. If North Carolina had a, a Sherrod Sloan and a Max Watson, by all means, yeah, we facts. could do a podcast. Oh, North Carolina, hundred percent. Yeah, I would. I, I, dude, I could. I thought about going back there with you. I was just like, mm. it's got its like everything. It has all kinds of wonderful positives. I don't know who I could cheap housing, it. in the sense of dude, like buying a house, and property. I've been getting into that lately thinking about like i just saw another friend of mine she lives in texas and you know she's playing around in her backyard and i was like oh good old shitty texas backyard and then i was be just, nice now yeah so cheap you know i was like dang the big ass backyard like that probably paying like 900 dollars a month i'm like Whew, man be sauce. back there playing with the dogs you know what i mean good sauce, little horseshoes hey, you you ain't getting nothing here for that you know it's so funny too like a lot of people look down, or at least I've in my life I've I've met and talked to a lot of people that look down on the middle class suburban lifestyle mm-hmm. as like a like I've even heard people call it like a prison. I was one of these people. Yes, uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, I mean, and it's just like it like it depends because there are some people that that do feel like that that mm-hmm. do feel trapped in that suburban lifestyle because it's not who they are. Mm-hmm. But then again, they're all like I've seen. 
some very happy families mm -hmm. living that suburban yeah, lifestyle. Like it's within. absolutely mm -hmm. everything that they've always dreamed of. 100%. They're finding their happiness within, you know. Yeah, and that's why he's like, that's why they're cool out there. Like that's where I'm at now. It's like I'm cool. Like I don't need the hustle and the bustle and the like, you know, the the going outs and all that. Like the not like you said, it's not like a knock on it, but that's what's cool about being in the suburbs is you could just go get that when you want and you could be back out of it yeah. you know and then you're just in your own it's a little, little bit of separation like, mm, convenience too you know when i think about certain places in north carolina sure. that i could live it's like well how far am i from a restaurant how far mm -hmm. am right. i from getting my groceries you know there's plenty of places in north carolina where you're a 15 minute drive from the Ooh, gas yeah. station <laughs> yeah, let alone you know <laughs> and that's not any sort say. of entertainment things yeah. So yeah, very true, very true. Open country out there. So convenience, you know, we mm -hmm. I, I had this in my show ideas about convenience, where mm -hmm. it's like, what are you willing to give up to to streamline? Mm -hmm. How much are you willing to give up for convenience? Mm -hmm. Do you want to live 15 minutes away from a gas station? No, but if you can have a really cheap house with a beautiful backyard, what are you willing to give up? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think people are willing to give up a lot more though, because now you get social interaction too through the internet right like mm -hmm. so that was one big thing about living not even call it suburbs but like out in the country more so or like being more isolated uh used to like not only did that come at the expense of good funds and stuff but it was like where are you gonna find people to chill with or you know do anything with you know and like um, but now that you have the internet, it's like, you don't really need all that. Well, anymore, now right? your your social circle is online. Yeah, so it goes where you go. You're not going down to the honky tonk. Mm -hmm. Some people are. I'm not saying people don't go out and socialize yeah. in person. But then, like you said, you can still go do that when you want to, but you still you don't feel like you're just like, dang, I don't I don't know what's going on in the world because I'm way up here. And But uh -huh. isn't, it, isn't it interesting then as people have been able to connect in that social way that you're talking about, easy more easily through through the digital aspect is it interesting then that we're seeing a lot of a huge rise in like levels of loneliness and depression and even like suicides and stuff like that yeah because mm. physical contact is gone mm. i think that uh, well i mean not to pull it into a different discussion but i think that, that it's just like an interesting way to look at because obviously convenience has its own costs and so i think that that plays into how like even it depends on what you're what convenience you're looking for too in a sense like the convenience of living somewhere where you don't have to uh where you don't have to be around a lot of hustle and bustle um is being somewhere yeah. where you also have to give up the convenience of being close to basic necessities also like how do you value time because if all you value is time and the convenience mm. talk then it's like what's going to save me more time is the more the, the thing i want to do mm -hmm. then it's like then you're you know your time That's is your true. master now so it's like i think yeah do like, anything to cut corners because of the mm, convenience of it mm. you know that's a good point. I didn't even think about it in the negative aspect of it. Well, I think of I often I often conflate this idea of things being convenient with comfortable for me, right? Like easier for mm -hmm. me. And yeah, that's I, what it is. Like it's and time is one of those ways, but it can it's be. It's like that's the kind of point you, I was making you about want time. Want a sick a seat cushion, you know? That would be convenient for you. You mm -hmm. know, like, like it would be more comfortable. It'd be more easy for you. Is essentially what I think. Like. All, it goes in all these different things. And so I pride myself on being somebody who does it the hard way. Mm. <laughs> like, I prefer, dude, I was out in the Northwoods and I was like, yo, I want to chop down one of these trees and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, we got this chainsaw over here. And I was like, I'm really trying to get it with the good axe. I want yeah, to just take to go it. Home I want, with yeah, this bad boy. I want to be out Hacks here with this Duggan. axe. I don't care if it takes me all day and fucking night. I want to chop this tree down with my hands. <laughs> like, mm. when I, like, I just... And it just felt different to me. And I was not always like this, but I've been growing more and more into this person who, like, I want to build my own house. And mm -hmm. I want to, um, I like sometimes doing things the hard, long way. Uh, but, again, it's, like, more of, like, a, a discipline thing, kind of we were talking about before. You know, you get so much more feedback and stuff when you're doing things yourself, I guess. And that it usually lacks that's the convenience right is to offload it from myself mm -hmm. but it depends on it are you doing it for fun or for like you know like sometimes you need to get shit done and in that play it's like i can't get my groceries to this house yeah. fast enough like i'm right. like where is the person that i can pay to buy the groceries mm -hmm. bring them here put them in my refrigerator i don't want yep. none of that I just like go time to versus money it's right. like how much am i willing to pay to save the time right. and i thought about something a great example because you made some wonderful green tea like mm -hmm. that shit was bomb. Mm -hmm. I like your tea, Thank right? You. 
took all the time to make his own tea, right? Mm. Like, how much time do you think overall it took you to you make that tea? You talking about the cold tea? tea? The cold tea, yes. Yeah, the cold brew tea. I mean, I mean, technically, based on time, it's like 18 hours because yeah, it has to steep. Mm. But I didn't do anything that whole time. Mm. It's just sitting in the fridge. Yeah, but like It takes me time. like 30 seconds. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, yeah, you got to go pick it out at the store. You know, you got to get your... Oh, all of that? I'm just saying, like, instead of just, like, grabbing a jug of Max green tea, like, yeah. you're saving all this time. You're probably spending even less money. So it's, like, convenience. Like, how do you define it? Because it's if you're saving time and money just picking mm-hmm. up a random green tea. But you're like, no, I like to do it my way. Like Rod said, mm-hmm. I want to get my hands dirty. I want to go mm-hmm. through the process. Mm-hmm. I admire that. And it's like... Yeah. That's that seems to be like a, going away from convenience and doing things the hard way seems to be the way we learn and grow and yeah. get better at things. That seems because you're never going to learn if you just if grab the fucking like, tea yeah. whatever, at the yeah. grocery store every time. Mm-hmm. And it's like, what's going in that tea? Well, I don't know. How much sugar is it? I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, brew that it's shit. The, is the water purified? I don't know. <laughs> is the water pure? Is it fair? Is it just that right? easy? Is that yeah, insane? Is like, is mm-hmm. the plastic recycled? But dude, don't even get me started because me and Matt talk about this a lot in your politics and in your life and shit too is I think that people don't get dirty enough with that stuff and try and learn and be active in the process mm-hmm. not just like you say sit back and watch the video but oh, oh what John Stossel said it's the fucking sc- <laughs> it's cynical that's got it it's like the lesson from it's Africa like, is if obvious, you make lip yeah. balm it's like but people don't want to do that <laughs> you shouldn't have to pay taxes yeah <laughs> Yeah, people don't want to do that digging and that's why I told you I go after the news like the big news because that's people just like you know you just sit back in your chair and you click on 5 o'clock and you just let them feed, feed you the information and it's like you really need to do your research out here you need to listen to some differing opinions you gotta really dig deep into stuff and, and that's all aspects of life I think yeah. you're right man but uh, I think that there's a balance and we just lost the balance completely in our society people mm. are just they want it to happen fast. I asked now, yeah. like, I never, I'll, I don't know who asked this question. You'll know. But when they said, are cheeseburgers really supposed to be a dollar? Like, is that a mm. good thing? You know, is it a good thing that you've learned to compress the patty down to a little micro processed thing that you can make a thousand a minute of mm-hmm. and cost 99 yes. cents? Is Fast food is the ultimate example of convenience. Really good? <laughs> That's the ultimate example yeah. of convenience where we all agree that we should be making our own food because yeah, it's just possibly. better for mm-hmm. us. We get to see mm-hmm. what's in the ingredients. Yeah. You get to take the Facts. time. You do it with love. You your whole energy foods. is put into it. I would rather it. pay the two extra dollars and wait the extra 20 minutes to have my food like prepared so correctly. Like a spectrum for you. <laughs> but you see, <laughs> like a spectrum for you where I will pay for a certain amount of convenience. But that's not convenience. Well, two, like I said, I want things those. actually. Yeah, that's actually a, eating whole foods is, is more convenient actually in the long run if it's Especially if you value time and money, and help. because the full cost of your food is not in the price. Mm. Yes, it is true. not in the price. Uh, the see the, full I cost see what you're of making. your food comes many, many years down yeah. the line. How later. many years you got on the back <laughs> <Yeah>. end, buddy? <laughs> but eating also, those plastic rubber cheeseburgers. But also, <gasps> the quote I was going to say earlier: the quote is that which you make convenient you lose connection with yeah. and i think that that's why we're seeing as as society moves closer to convenience mm-hmm. they're leaving behind all of the connections to the spirit like the the vibes and the energy shit Dude. like that people talk about it a lot now but people are so far separated from it it's not even funny that's exactly what i was just talking about earlier about why i yeah. like to do things myself the now. connection it's because because I, you wanted to like when, you said you literally said it i wanted to do it with my own hands, hands. Dude, you wanted, I wanted to, to feel, feel it, it. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted I to want feel the machine it. to do it for me. Yep. I want I wanted to know, especially like a, a chopping down a tree. I mean, I'm like, I've never done this stuff. I'm like, yo, you're taking this tree's life. Like, you're ending this tree out here. You know, show us some goddamn respect. If and life, do it, if li- tell That's me, funny. vegans, if life means <laughs> that it's important and all sentient life is important, then how come you guys eat plants? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that is something. not allowed. They drew gotta a line in the sand. They said, if you something. can't make a noise. Yeah. <laughs> I was watching this thing. Hold up. That I can hear? Uh, what were you watching? Oh, yeah. I was telling you about yeah. this. I didn't know. They came back. It's official. The Smithsonian. This, this is, is very recent. When did this article get posted? Okay. Mm, I want some Tell zoom the, on this, please. Yeah. It's zoom. Oh, control zoom. Oh, oh. Yeah, get in there. 
This is 2018. That's ridiculous. Okay, right? It's ridiculous. And yeah, it's just some some story. Little, yeah, little story, story to get you hooked in here. Yeah, it's like listen. Right there, it says it. I mean, uh, it does say it a definitive statement. It's impossible to definitely know whether another creature's subjective experience is like our own. Well, I guess he but didn't he say does, pain. I thought he was going to say pain. I'm sorry. Well, if fish, fish do, do feel, feel pain, pain, it's likely different from what humans feel, but it is still a kind of pain. I can't mm. believe that At people were out here. At the anatomical le- level, fish have neurons known as neuroceptors which detect potential harm such as high temperatures, intense pressure. Yeah, so they have they have something in them that pushes them. Why do you think you feel pain, right? It's to keep you on track. The reason right. you feel like you feel a stove is so you can get your fucking hands off it before it melts you to death. Right, it's protecting you, so... Let, read this. This is amazing. Yeah. <laughs> in one study, researchers dropped clusters of brightly colored Lego blocks into tanks containing rainbow trout. Yeah. Trout typically avoid an unfamiliar object suddenly introduced to their environment in case it's dangerous. But when scientists gave the rainbow trout a painful injection of the acidic acid, they were much less likely to... Ex- Did I skip a line? No, no, no you're, no, you're, oh, you're yeah. They just literally shot them with acid, and then they're like, no, they're not getting defensive. They're less, they're less defensive. <laughs> <laughs> Presumably, because we're presuming fun. here. Yeah. It's true. Like Presumably all the because they were distracted by their own suffering. I mean, yeah, well, he's like, ah, my oh, eyes wait a minute. Eyes. Yeah, she's talking about analgesics and morphines. Like, they basically pumped them with morphine, and then they were like, Mwah! when we give fish morphine, they don't react to when we drop Lego blocks in the water. <laughs> no shit. Facts. Facts, bro. They're just like, yeah, they're not reacting to these Lego blocks the way we like them to. Yeah, it's like, well. It, well you know, there's in other studies, but it's all about these receiving injections. And their lips began to then, breathe more quickly. We rock back and forth. Oh. And they rubbed their lips against the gravel in the side of the tank. So they could clearly tell that there was something not right about their lips. They yeah, they were that. just like, they were like, oh, like there's if something I was just wrong with my lips. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I can't believe that it took all the way. I didn't know that this was a thing. So apparently this was the whole argument They're for catch and release fishing. I'm going to go a little bit hunter and fisherman on you guys for a second. Yeah. Like catch and release fishing is one of the dumbest things I've ever heard of. Mm. Like I get the idea of wanting to conserve fish mm-hmm. and being a conservationist. I'm very big into that. But the idea that you're going to still let people fish, but you're not going to let them keep the fish. And you're just going to continually be catching and releasing the same fish I've in this pond. I've seen fish die from just getting from caught. From just getting caught and released. Yeah, mm-hmm. like, and that happens a lot. And they'll just dump them back in the water. But it's like, I always thought that that was fucked up. But I didn't know that, that the reason that people were cool with that was because a lot of them didn't know or didn't think that fish felt pain. And then when yeah, I found out I that people that. were out here, I didn't know that people didn't think that fish felt. I've always thought that fish felt pain. Nah, just I, based I on observation, I was like, when you see a fish get stabbed, it moves away. <laughs> I, I had heard that it was just like I didn't know it was pain. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I don't know what the fuck. I see. This is what I'm talking about. Why like, can't be can just complacent like, in your information? Somebody was like, fish don't feel pain. And I was like, what? That's crazy. Say, what? But if they came at me and they said, hey, when you inject fish with acid. They don't react to colored Lego blocks. <laughs> I mean, if you if you yeah. fuck with the fish's be. lip, it'll rub it on the ground. <laughs> if you shoot painful acid into the fish's lips, it's gonna rub them on the on the ground. Uh, on the bottom. Of the- okay, what does that mean? They like, could just be high as hell. You sometimes just be high as hell. Like, I don't know, man. Well, like because they maybe said- it is pain, but it's like what what is it? Is it just like. That, okay. that doesn't tell me anything. They're, if they're, I wanted to play the brain. devil's advocate right now, I'd be like, "Well, how do we know they don't really like getting stabbed in the fi- in the fucking lips?" Maybe they're like, "That's an orgasm." Maybe they lose like, some that shit. Yeah, like maybe put this, put the acid of pain in my lips. is like ecstasy does. Anyways, I just think that, like you said, it, it makes a lot of sense in what they're saying because the same way you avoid danger is because of pain, right? Like, in, in inherently, as your brain's a computer, its only work is to draw you towards pleasure and avoid pain, and then it uses that hyperactively to protect your body right. and and shoot you at sharp pains to let you know, like, hey, don't do this, don't do that again. You're fucking this up. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, I just think that also considering like these are all like biologists and stuff like you know like the people that are very much into the environment I'm like so we're like big into science like if evolutionarily we all came from the water like that was the birthplace of life was the water that's why babies hold their breath 
Yeah. Yeah. So I just don't understand how we could come all the way out to the water to this point and everything in between feels pain, but fish don't. Yeah. I'm like, how does that happen? Obviously, a dog (laughs) feels pain. How does we get? How does every other part of the system feel pain? And why do they run? Like, 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 we like have, you said, like, like, why do you run away from sharks and shit if you don't feel <laughs> you know Like, I'm telling you, like, they feel pain. You know, like, something bad about that. It's because ass. they look so, like, people, like, as soon as you come onto the land, like, that's, like, our realm. Mm. So I feel like it's also a little bit of subconsciously playing in, like, you kind of, like, you know, you need something to dominate over, you know? Yeah. Like, like, well, the fish, fish are, like... You know, they're fish. We're just going to string them on strings and keep them in a bucket after I catch them. That way, when I kill them, they're more fresh. It's like, dude, that's kind of fucked up. Don't you think you should just kill it right now? Like, yeah, put it out. <laughs> I think of it like this. Like, what if you did that with a deer? Would you just look string at, a look deer up? We're just up fishing them fucking... up by, like, the hundreds. These guys are like... <gasps> <gasps> just little, like, dude. Yeah, it's just, like, so suffocating just dudes, them. Like, <laughs> like, imagine if you were, like, if you were in the woods and you were just... the world. <laughs> that's why this whole, uh, this whole argument that Alex Jones makes about the globalists, it's like, all the energy for the Satanists, you know, like, that kind of yeah. stuff. Like, look at all that pain and suffering yeah. that's going up into the world as energy. Yeah. It's like, that's not doing anything. Thing. That's yes. just fish dying, like. And but what's crazy is whales. They'd be talking to each other in like real distinct languages. Uh, mm-hmm. right, yeah, it's just tons. Same with dolphins. Yeah. They'd be communicating and 100%. talking in incredibly, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. intricate complex. ways and complex mammals. ways. Yeah, mammals. Yeah. And it's like they got big old brains. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like obviously they feel pain. It's interesting right. how the conscious spectrum works, though. Like you said, like you can be like plants. Like plants are alive. But they definitely don't feel pain. Like, it's right like, above that is like bugs. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody on planet Earth except etymologists give a, a shit about bugs. You squish a, yeah, you a, squish heart, a roach every single the, time the you see yes. it. They come out and be like, you should not eat animals. Yeah, I apologize. I apologize. 100% we need to talk about bugs right now. I Nobody's apologize. putting bugs into these arguments. Mm, and true. I feel like we need to dig. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Like I, if you're going to... I made a point back back uh, to somebody in North Carolina. I said, why aren't we eating bugs? They <laughs> oh, like I, I, remember I was this. like, they seem like a fucking resource. That you're never going to run out of bugs. <laughs> just like think, millions think of about them. how many crickets oh, can, geez. can become in a cricket bung- bundle. Oh, I do. <laughs> a bundle of cric- crickets. Like a box of crickets. Like a box of crickets. That's why. Like, <laughs> like, I want to be able to go to my grocery store and buy like a box of fried crickets. <laughs> You know, in some places in Louisiana, you can do that. Shout out to the post I saw on Facebook of uh, my homie who caught a squirrel eating a grasshopper. (laughs) Wait, go back up to that picture. Uh There you go. I can't do that. Let's see. Why I should eat crickets. Healthy, sustainable, delicious. (laughs) Look at this. 80% of country. 200 calories per (laughs) serving. It's got 31 <laughs> grams of protein. No, I'm not the it's first. Not, look at how much <laughs> omega 3s and fibers are in crickets, I'm bro. I'm about to be a lit off crickets, bro. <laughs> what is this? All right, we also have to look at a website that says oh. that you shouldn't eat bugs. Just for, because this, obviously this website is leaning. Yeah. It's got a cart button and everything. So yeah. it wants you to eat bugs. It's got a cart so you can buy like we can't bugs. Trust, we can't trust this little flyer anymore that we can trust any other flyer we see on Facebook. This is like lessons from Africa. Okay. Like, right. We need to dig deeper. Sensory quality of edible insects. Mm. From an initial point. 20 to 76% of dry matter. Wow. Fat content is 2 to 50%. Holy shit. Oh, it's like totally poly. I wonder what a <laughs> serving. Yeah, right. So, I, was I wonder thinking, what a like, what serving just, of crickets is like. Bro, <laughs> what if you just start popping off a little bit the uh, the 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 table? What's the fucking table? The elements? What if you were just like sodium? Like those ones were like NaCaC or what if you knew them? You're just like nickel them. <laughs> you're just like bang bang. Oh, uh, it was funny. Wow, look at this. What are we looking at here? It's just like how good crickets are for 100 you. Hundred gram a coal whole a, a keta a keta. Is that crickets. a type of grasshopper that is particularly uh, nutrition dense? Uh, it yeah. seems to be compared to beef That's crickets yeah. better optimized low fat versus high energy content with the most amount of protein. But Bro, your body doesn't use protein as fuel though. It's like building blocks. Let me find out. 
that crickets are the most healthy thing for you on the planet. It's the most sustainable, healthy energy source and protein source on the planet. Crickets, bro. That'd be incredible. My face when I realize I'm going to be eating crickets for the rest of my life. <laughs> That'd be incredible. There's you something remember when people we were saying this. that we were going to eat bugs because we were running out of food? I mean... Like obviously, I'm going for the crickets. If it, this is something that just saved your life, okay? This is why you watch this show. Because now, if you're ever stranded out in the middle of nowhere, like yep. you know, what I'm saying? this is not Bear Grylls, folks. We this is some real shit. And right if now. you ever yep. end up needing it, you're gonna be like, dude. That one time I was listening to three average intelligent dudes. They said you could get protein out these goddamn crickets. So I'm about yep. to go in. That shit can save more life. protein per pound than a goddamn steak. Than a whole steak. That's you can maintain your gains for while, real. while in survivor mode. Fast. And you know and you can the, get them. Like, this. people use crickets and shit for bait and stuff all the time? Oh, stuff. So crickets to feed the lizards just, too. Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna get them cheap. We're in LA. We could get a bucket of crickets. <laughs> <laughs> We can get a bucket of crickets delivered to we this can, door we can Uber before eats. this podcast is over. <laughs> we can do Uber Eats a bucket of crickets <laughs> faster than you can say. And we're on the ocean, so we could even have some flown in from like somewhere else. Yeah. We get some exotic crickets. But Bro. that's true, you know. I, that's the thing like, about it is we're, we're laughing crickets. about it, but there's a lot of cultures in the world that are like. Yeah, this people is, are like literally just eating crickets right now. All yeah. the time. Like, there's somebody eating chocolate covered ones. Just like, <laughs> yep. Y'all yeah, tripping, crickets, dude. Yep, yeah, for what sure. the hell? <laughs> y'all don't eat yeah, crickets? It's it's could be, it could be part of traditional dishes for all we know. That's <laughs> absolutely a delicacy. That's um, hilarious. Very funny. That's funny, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm definitely like. What else do you want to talk about? How convenient <laughs> do you think it would How convenient do you think it would be to eat bugs? Well, I mean, I think extremely cheap. thing is the how farming they're... would be super cheap. It's just I keep crickets in mm. a bunch of crates and let them. Whoa, whoa, whoa that's not unintended cool, bro. consequences you can't, you can't, with this. Those crickets bugs like that? feel pain. That's what. Oh, then we definitely got to bring it back to that because you know that's what I was saying. Like, if how ethical is well, it? To how, farm where does the consciousness? That people people really equate this to like that that consciousness level conversation of this. Like, mm-hmm. can you feel it? Because if you're doing if you're not eating animals based on the fact that whether or not they feel pain then you shouldn't have anything to eat because they all they all everything feel feels pain right yeah. you know what i mean like it's, it's like mm-hmm. i said i was telling you the other day scientists think they found out how plants communicate with each other via the mycelium network that's basically oh, right. in the entire everything world. like over the entire yes. earth yeah it's much like in the water and shit yeah like fungi fungi yep. essentially yeah. like, there's a whole the network that grows that's on completely rocks connected and stuff all yeah. the time yeah. it's just everywhere yeah and, and you're just yeah it's I, literally I, and all i would in, love if we also world. pull up the fact that that thing's alive because it's a whole living organism yes mm-hmm. because the biggest the, living organism the study with the japanese railway system where it's like it based off of it yeah yes oh my god as soon as i saw that i was like okay so the mycelium network is like communicating like it knows how to build the best network Crazy. The fungus grows through the soil, picking up nutrients and water and bringing them back to the plant and trading them for photosynthetic carbon. We were able to see the carbon transmits back to the plant. Look at Napster, bro. <laughs> They're just. <laughs> look yeah. at that. That's basically In Napster. This picture, these circles represent Douglas fir trees. Yep. And the bigger and darker the circle, the bigger and older the tree. And those small light circles in the middle, those are the seedlings growing in the understory. And these lines that are linking the circles, those are the interlinking mycorrhizal fungal highways. It's a symbiotic, mutualistic, reciprocal relationship. And most fascinating to me that these fungi could connect plants below ground. I've shown that precisely these unseen connections exist. Once I thought that fairies connected and protected the forest and now with my love that movie i wasn't that far off bro 
It's like this one plant gives the other plant something that makes it into what it is. They just pass it around. Into these fungi, and there's a an interface between the root. Uh, cortical cells. They're all just talking to each other. Yeah, and giving each other what they need mm -hmm. to be what they are. Yep. It's because of shit like this so and like the way currents work in the ocean and shit that mm -hmm. leads me to my mindset of being like, I don't understand anything. Yeah, yeah I don't understand yeah, anything. Nobody knows anything. Shut the fuck up. It's all completely <laughs> complete magic space <laughs> magic <laughs> dust. <laughs> I don't want to hear shit. Nobody Get shit. off me, okay? <laughs> Interacting with each other. It's the Matrix. Stop oh. it. Yeah. Yeah. You don't know the shit. Who's yeah, gonna no win shit. the next Super Bowl? Yeah. No shit. You don't know shit. <laughs> but look at that little thing just traveling. Here you go. But see, like they're eating and then it dies and becomes that. <laughs> and then they poop when they leave, and then that becomes another plant. User friendly to this is terrible animation. Sick bees, though. Come on, you got the bees? The bees are kind of cool. Yeah, I'll give you that. A relationship. That's true, though. They're you like the that. bacteria of plants. The mushroom always be coming off the sides of the yes. trees and yep. shit. Yes. It's and the, all and the tree it. is feeding certain aspects to the mushroom, or the That's mushroom is taking certain things from the tree. But we know this, though. We know this yeah. from like even like you said they there's science with it, but you can watch life like you said where your body go when you die, but melts like, back in the fungi come and they get you and they carry you off and turn you into something else. Yeah. But psychedelics, man, like they're they create psychedelics. Like they they come they give us this. Why why do mushrooms come out? It's so they could be eaten. Yeah, but you know not every mushroom takes you on a trip. You know? I'm saying though, mm -hmm. like some of them take you to, to the final trip. <laughs> some of them okay, yeah, and then some of them are just. On your pizza too. So yeah. <laughs> so, like so, what are, so that's like the three but different tribal mushrooms. Like, like kill you, uh, <laughs> taste good, or true, sent true. you to the magical <laughs> realm. Yeah. <that's> true. <laughs> so that's it's true. like when your mind is expanded like that. The, yeah. I just I don't know. The stoned ape theory is yeah. always on my mind whenever I think about mushrooms. What's that? Something you can uh, yeah look at the stoned ape theory is. I mean, I'll let it explain, but basically, like you know, these Joe Rogan ancestors of ours tripped mm. and make sure this is a fair <laughs> use <laughs> um, how much did you pay attention me. to McKenna's theory uh, about uh, the evolution of the human brain of uh, the stone ape theory that yeah I looked at it uh, oh okay I think I immediately got it so we got high and that's how we got consciousness uh, yeah like, like we we survival skills and it was like, like uh, ego death <laughs> yeah like exactly yeah, just like Mario, Mario. <laughs> it's like ego death it allows you to be a leader and face your fears it's yeah. like all that and like you ate that shit and you were like oh shit <laughs> oh shit I can fuck this shit up like what yeah. am I doing just running around yeah but here. animals animals do eat that shit though yeah, it's true though. Like the whole, I heard Joe Rogan talk about this too. thing. He talked about this whole story about how Christmas is actually like all religion and shit is like actually, or like the story of Santa Claus and shit is actually this mushroom that reindeer eat. Like they get loopy as fuck on this shit every year is. when they come around yeah, and they grow and they, underneath Christmas trees and they're red and white yeah. and like reindeer eat them and they fly away <laughs> and then. <laughs> Then some when they shit, some reindeers will come and then eat the shit and like mm. double trip on it. <laughs> double trip on Dude, that. <laughs> like so, like Yo, I think how come reindeer don't have like cars and shit? Yeah, fa uh, but facts. maybe it's because their brain isn't also is big enough. <laughs> you know, big That's enough. Very to mix they're living with within it. their means. Yeah. So their means, That's like a cricket's point. means, is just like I'm born, I reproduce, I die in like four days or something. Whatever, That's whatever cricket point. lifespan is, it's just like that's their existence yes. and it's like these deer reindeer have enough of what we consider consciousness to be mm -hmm. like let's tap into the mycelium and see what these tree people's talking about and you also need hands <laughs> you need hands for certain things that's also a big part hands of it. are really help out with that <laughs> hard to make cars yeah. without hands yeah <laughs> um but <laughs> the mycelium network though essentially is just the 
building and breaking process of, right. the, of nutrients. Like essentially, because you, like you think about this too, when people talk about being zero waste, it always cracks me up inside. I'm just like, nothing is ever zero waste. That's part of the system. Like the mycelium network giveth to you and you have to give back to the mycelium yep. network. You'll never live forever. You'll never We're be... We're all just well, until we Until we get off the mycelium network and move into the... Hmm. The internet, the digital, the digital network, and then wait till we get into this the whole air. mycelium suit thing you're wearing won't need mm-hmm. that. Anymore. Are we gonna watch this one? I oh, still kind of hear want to hear what this guy says about I, it because he kind of looks like an ape. And in fact, if you press Terence McKenna, he didn't find it entirely persuasive. It's a very, it's an interesting speculation. It's kind mm. of a mind game. I don't see how I can see how uh, psychedelics would influence the mind and 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 create new ideas, new memes, um, and might contribute to language. Did he say um, new memes? I think so. Yeah, genes. memes is, apparently but memes is like an old genes, word. The genes, because he said it changed us at the genetic level. Mm. I see psychedelics as having had a profound effect at the level of cultural evolution, that there are lots of mm. interesting innovations that people who had psychedelic experience introduced to our culture. Uh, we talked about religion earlier. Sure. That could be one. Uh, I had a wonderful interview with Stuart Brand, the founder of the Whole Earth Catalog. And his insight, he had this profound insight um, during a, a psychedelic trip on the roof of his house in North Beach. And he saw the curvature of the earth in a way he hadn't before. And he said, God, if we could have a photo, this is 1966. Uh, we had never seen a picture of the earth from space yet. And he said, if we had a picture of the earth from space and we could see it as this round spaceship, that would change everything because if you think of the earth as flat as most of us instinctively do it's endless there's endless resources uh you don't have to worry about limits in any way but if we had that image and he realized we i have to start a campaign to get nasa to turn the cameras around they're on their way to the moon show us the earth from space and he said i I, i'm going to make a campaign i know and he's you know this is on lsd i'll make a button very important medium in 1966 i'll make a button and what should the button say? It should be a little paranoid to get people's attention. Why haven't they shown us an image of the Earth from space? Yeah, that's what he would do. And he started a campaign. He started selling these buttons. And the campaign got in the newspapers. And it goes viral, as you know, as viral as you could get in 1966. And two years later, NASA produced that image. And he put it on the whole Earth catalog. And that two years. And that galvanized the environmental movement. So it's those kind of memes that psychedelics introduces into culture and that changes mm. culture that right. that image changed culture um and i think there are hundreds of them i mean steve jobs talked about you know his use of hmm. lsd is very important to his uh formative experience and in fact there's a whole tradition of computer engineers going back to the 50s using lsd that i i wrote about in the book so but i don't see how it, we were selected genetically because of there, there was an advantage to the people who were taking a lot of psychedelics um, that's I don't where think he loses that's necessarily me. his. Uh, Maybe I'm theory. misrepresenting it. His theory is that it coincides with climate change and these uh, lower hominids experiencing, uh, experimenting with different food sources. So as the uh, rainforest receded into grasslands, right, right. they started uh, experimenting by flipping over cow patties and finding grubs and and perhaps even mushrooms that were growing on these cow patties. And his theory was that there's a bunch of different benefits one low doses of psilocybin have been shown to increase visual acuity which and it's given to hunting dogs yes. in certain cultures yes yeah make you a better hunter make you right. more in tune with what you're doing um that it would make you more it would uh central nervous system arousal including sexual arousal right. make you more horny which would make you you more know productive, procreate right. more often and that the the very unusual effect that psilocybin has on the mind could have led to language and could have also led to the expansion of neurons. The well, language the could human be brain part of cultural evolution. Sure. Yeah. The doubling of the human brain size, though, was a, yeah. the, the particular thing that yeah. it coincided, according to McKenna, it's been, th- th- there's a lot of people that disagree with him. But his brother makes a very compelling case for Dennis. it. His brother, Dennis, who's still alive. Yeah. I'm and he's a know. brilliant, brilliant guy. Yeah. He, he talked about it on this podcast. He talked about his take on the stoned, er, er, uh, stoned ape theory scientifically, why he believes it's, it's w- really what happened. But that it does coincide with the change in climate of yeah. these, uh, these you know, ape-like people trying out different things. And that the doubling of the human brain size over a period of two million years is like one of the greatest mysteries in the entire fossil yeah, record. Yeah, but there are alternate <laughs> theories. I mean, Much, I wrote about I one of my last books. 
all coincide. They may be. Cooking with fire yes. can explain the increase sure. in the brain size because you get more nutritional value from cooked food the than raw The throwing arm. The throw, did you hear what he said? The throwing arm, boy. Different ways to do that in communication. <laughs> right. I think there's hey, throw everything, everything at this guy. Yeah, yeah, throw everything at this guy. Yeah, get him away from the tribe. People were eating everything, right? Our ancestors, it's amazing what they ate. And uh, and no doubt they ate psychedelic mushrooms. And no doubt, I mean, he also believed that language was a form of synesthesia, you know, in mm -hmm. the way that synesthesia, you can smell a musical note or something like yeah. that. That you're taking a, a sound, a meaningless sound, uh, you know, um, and, and you're attaching it to a concept that maybe that happened on uh, psilocybin. But well, he had a bunch of ideas that never panned out. He was, you know, he was, look, he was a more of this? creative person. Huh? You don't yeah. need more of this? No. Uh, yeah. I, uh, I mean, mm. I don't know. Yeah, you don't think the, the, the network's talking to us? I definitely think that. That's what I'm saying. Like, uh, you know how technology doubles, like, and everything starts to seem to move more exponentially? I think that that's happened. Uh, dude, I heard a crazy statistic that it took, um, and I want to look it up, so y'all just got to give me a second, but... Uh, how fast I think I told you all this already population resulting in the population explosion about the total number of humans to a billion by 1800 there that's exactly 200, 220 years ago uh, we hit a billion I hit a billion but we're at <coughs> 7 billion now 220 years later mm. from the dawn of recorded histories where it, <laughs> it, it, they <laughs> estimate about let's say 5 million in uh, 8000 bc yeah so about what a thousand years ago it's a, so, a new phenomenon yeah between 1900 quadrupled i mean excuse me 10 i meant 10,000 i said a thousand i think 10,000 mm -hmm. years ago in between 1700 and 2000 it climbed by a factor of 10 yeah, that's so. Anyways, things seem to be exponentially ramping. Everything seems to ramp exponentially like that, uh, and so I would definitely think that that's kind of how the human evolution happened as well. Like where it was like, and uh, probably because of a lot of things, you know. I mean, but I doubt that mushrooms had a lot. I mean, I, you know, it's tough to say. I mean, it's tough to say. A lot of my own evolution was. Sp and I wouldn't say started by that, but definitely brought along by that. You know, it definitely helped you think outside of the box of just eat food. You know? well, I think I think where the Joe Rogan thing got a little weird is that guy. The other guy was talking about like LSD trips affecting culture. Mm -hmm. Hundred percent agree with LSD trips can right. affect the culture. Mm -hmm. Like Santana could get up there at Woodstock, take some LSD, yeah. and rip the craziest solo of all time or something. Mm -hmm. But that's not talking about mushrooms and how that could have made you know, pre-humans, you know, go into this period of brain growth. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's what the what they were ta trying. Yeah. To, that's what Joe was trying to talk about with the guy. And the guy was like, yeah, but LSD trips are this other thing. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I get that. It sounds awesome. And I agree. Well, he was just saying that he didn't think that it was biological yeah. because at the same time too, I don't think that mushrooms really grow the size of your brain. You yeah. Know? <laughs> I, don't think you I eat just a bunch get this of wild image of like a bunch of like, you know, like pre-humans, you yeah. know? And then one of them's like, eats the things, and it's like, whoa, like, we're a group. We could take down that cheetah. Yeah, like, well, we totally, we, we all have throwing arms, right? I could probably convince these other guys. Oh, man. Yeah. Like, how how can I really convince high. them? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's, really uh, it's, a, it's a weird, it's a weird thing to think about, like, how they might have used it. I mean, obviously, we know that further along, closer to our time, they used it ceremonially and religiously. Yeah, shamans yeah. and stuff. Like yeah. you said, hunting. Mm -hmm. So, like, Native Americans and, like... Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, shit, in Nordic, and... Nordic cultures would get drunk before yeah. they got into battle because they thought that that nothing. would make them better. You ain't no Some shooter cultures. if you can't do that shit without no molly. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty gangster. Yeah, that was a line off of, like, a gangster rap that I listened to. Okay. But <laughs> he says that, though. It's like he said, it's been since the dawn of time motherfuckers been getting fucked up to go yeah. out there and to go out there and do what they gotta do up, yeah. yeah so hey we gotta do what we gotta do <laughs> yeah for real so um but yeah, i don't know if it has i'm like a fish inject evolution. me some with some of that acetic acid maybe <laughs> that was like them getting drunk you know? <laughs> i feel like rubbing my lip <laughs> with the gravel <laughs> it's not pain they love the acid <laughs> 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 love it. 
Mm -hmm. but dude this is scary right here too with this idea like that the world population is growing that fast because well, I've actually heard some a people lot of worry people about this not. overpopulation well shit. from 5 million to 1 billion it was 9,800 years and then in the since 220 years we've gone from a billion to mm -hmm. like 8 billion or mm -hmm. 7 billion so it's like yeah I can see huge exponential growth well, yeah, I mean, there's lots of things to explain that. I mean, but um, what uh, I've heard a lot of people say that, like, they were seeing projections that say it's going to, like, peak around, like, 9 billion. Yeah. And that, well, specifically in modern countries, it's actually becoming a problem because developing countries are having very positive population growth, which is interesting. But then modernized civilizations are having a negative population. Mm -hmm. And so, like, especially like Japan, like I, I hear that Japan is having a really hard time with this because they're about to run out of old people, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like all their old people are going to die off and then they're just going to be, like there's going to be a gap in between um, like generations, I guess, because they're not making enough babies. And mm -hmm. this is something that's been shown like as, cult, like as a society becomes more wealthy and like, women become more educated and they become more free and autonomous people start having less children and they have them later in life mm. um and so it creates like these negative population growth but some people think that because there's so many people f concentrated in these countries right now that that negative population growth will begin to like tip off like the population growth globally oh god and yes. then it'll start to decline think, severely think, think about sex robots being introduced right. into that kind of an atmosphere right yeah. like oh my god and i mean and that's the whole about... reason that people are worried about social security right now is because there's there's a gap in between like once like the baby boomers are all gonna die soon hmm. i mean well, shout out to the baby boomers. Technically speaking. You guys, are living, you guys are living big out there. Yeah, I'm not trying to shit on hey, you guys. I'm just we saying. just saying three averagely intelligent dudes. We we definitely could be living past 65. Dying. <laughs> they will be the soonest dying. And then there's going to be a gap in between, because of a lot of cultural reasons as well, there's going to be a gap in between people who are collecting Social Security and people who are paying old enough to be working and paying into Social Security. Nice. And it's going to run out of money. Yeah. And, it's and we're like, making YouTube money now. So right. Like, and so it's like, what does yeah, that, you know? Time. Like, yeah. it's not yeah. really taxed the same yeah, way it's so not the same we and you know really like a lot of people like are making freelance money and yeah, stuff so like none of that's getting taxed and obviously i don't understand all of it very well but it's like if, if they if they showed up tomorrow and we're like yeah we had social security and it was in the stock market and things exploded and now the federal reserve has decided to burp, burp, burp. i'd be like oh that sounds really official yeah they, you know, like, they're, I mean, they're, oh, all of it's gone they're gonna juice it yeah oh our, our debt oh yeah you know something like yeah. buy bail bonds to yeah. secure the social security you know like some crazy thing. We're gonna thing. dump like, three trillion into social security. Jeff Bezos is, is, he's dedicated every dollar you give. He's gonna yep. give a pair of Tom shoes to an African shoemaker. <laughs> this is gonna be great. People, I'm <laughs> for social security. This is really gonna yeah. help. Facts. And at the same time, it's like two birds, one stone. <laughs> we get social security. They yeah. can choose. Yeah, Everybody loves tripping. it. But I'm just saying, like, but there's a gap. Though. Yeah. Well, I'm just saying, like, with social, with the, with those things, like, they they could always go away. Like that yeah. idea of like, oh, we're buying into this. We have this retirement. <laughs> fun for old people because Dude. they've paid their whole life into this thing and it's like the baby boomers are the first generation to actually use the 401k right like, that's crazy that we don't even realize that like it hasn't even it's barely lasted one <laughs> It's oh, barely lasted one run. One uh, go they're just all now these programs like you're talking yeah. about are just they're new. They're Bro. not as like they're not as you, old as people think. and and well established. Details of those 401ks and shit are crazy. It's not as good as people. Like, these think motherfuckers it is. be like, oh yeah, oh well. You when you retire, you get uh, this amount. Or yeah. You can get this little. You can get this little bit more. But then your kids don't get it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Or you get this a little bit more tax this or way. you know nobody <laughs> like you know it's just it died when it, when you die it stops. Mm -hmm. Or you or you can get this little bit if you want to get this little bit then everybody gets it. You know family you know lives on with your you know four hundred one k pension. I highly and, recommend the book um, Money Master crazy. the Game mm -hmm. by Tony Robbins and he talks a lot about this four hundred one k issue and stuff mm -hmm. and about just like how you know it, just different ways you might not know how it, it works and right if you it pay could into be it your you. whole life yeah. bro and then you retire and before you get your first paycheck like you you die mm -hmm. then it's like what what happened to all the and it's like the pension people got oh, stiffed all the time you know yeah. it's like you retire you thinking i'm about to get this pension and all of a sudden your shit go belly up they're like no pension sorry and you're like what 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 happened what, what? Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so I mean, I so when we talk about social security, I just think of it like that. I think of it like yeah, this, like it's just gonna <laughs> this thing that may never affect me yeah. because our world may be run into the ground by clowns and buffoonery. Yeah. By then, you'll be eating crickets. And We're gonna well. be everybody's gonna be eating crickets. <laughs> <laughs> Central That's banking so was demolished yeah. in the 2030s. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, but I mean. To bring it back to the population, though, but I think that that's something that's not something that I hear a lot of people talk about, but that's something that I've heard. I mean, like Jordan Peterson's talked about that, like how we're going to peak at nine billion and then we're going to start rapidly losing populations. But like losing how can they one, come up with that number, though, well, I was saying, I mean, like, how does Jordan people's Peterson models? Know, right? I don't know. Jordan Peterson, I don't know. Like he's like reads a lot of shit, I guess, while he's. Kicking off of benzos? I don't know how this man knows all this stuff. <laughs> He's always like, he was geeked up. I was geeked up. I can't really do it at the Canadian. No, he, 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 his shit, bro. I was watching his video. And I had to break it down. He, they were, they were clowning dog. I was like, okay, bro. I can get down with, the, I can get down with the benzo addiction. Honestly, like that's fine. Everybody's had their thing. But the way he was trying to come out with it, I was just, he was like, and my akathisia was so bad. It was terrible akathisia. You know, this I'm like akathisia, akathisia. Oh, akathisia. Yeah, I thought you were saying akathisia. But no, exactly. No, 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 no. He kept pulling, he kept throwing this word around. It was the thing that he was taking the benzos for. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. It's like if he'd stop taking the benzos, he would get the crazy akathisia. Yeah, and it was just. Intolerable, insufferable. I was like, "What the fuck is Akathia?" This is your legs <laughs> shaking when you're when you want you to. You can't move. sit still. Of course, you can't sit still. You are detoxing from fucking benzodiazepines, which is fucking that, Xanax. That <laughs> is, of course, that is yes. insane. It's like, <sighs> man, this is unbearable. But that's what happens when you've been a fucking Xanax head for. And so I just I didn't like. <laughs> the way i didn't like that you know i was like if you're gonna come out and you're gonna admit to being a, a mm. an addict and all that yeah. stuff then just own it and be like yeah, yeah. you know i was tripping on Go the on things an episode and of, it was too hard for me yeah. to um to clean up off of it and so i yeah. kept using them but it, it though it needs i'll, I'll pull Look, up a clip of you on any an oh. episode of you know that's what if i was jordan i would have gone on intervention you know and whole, <laughs> i would have done the whole episode it would have been the biggest watched if not thousands of people respond um, telling me how horrible benzodiazepine withdrawal could be, um, how they couldn't work, how they were pacing around their backyards for a year. Um, and they basically said, just keep him alive. Make sure he stays yeah, well, alive. The, the psychiatrists that I spoke with said, you know, when I asked them how long the akathisia was likely to last, they said, well, it could be two years. And I thought, no one could live like this for two years. It's like <laughs> live for two years if you're I mean we just read what akathisia was. Extremely <laughs> painful on a moment to moment basis. It's just not and there's no escape. There's no relief. That's just not possible. Painful like painful, like is there pain in your legs or does he just mean like he doesn't like having a it, it's withdrawals, you know? Like yeah. like that shit. I've seen people on like okay, yeah. I've seen movies and representations of people I've seen real footage of people going through withdrawal pains and it is tough. I'm not saying it's not tough, you know. But it, consequences you know what I mean can we like you've been taking Xanax like off the riff obviously for like a long time you're right you're gonna go through some serious withdrawals and he just the whole time he's like and I just didn't like it. you know like the, but the I mean sense like, of, like was he I didn't see anything about him like um like abusing Xanax like like barred out like I, was he like I thought he had like a prescription I for it. I mean of course he had a prescription well, I mean, for I guess it, to get they talk, have, have yeah, prescription yeah, yeah. Well, he went to, he went to rehab but they for talked a reason. about how they, like they something. upped his they upped his dosages and stuff and I'm pretty sure because he does be saying like I've heard him talk about how he's like you know antidepressants work for some people like but he, the way he, he talks about talk it about exactly it like he talks that. about it with this complete like. This like it, not my bad, you know, not my fault at all. They prescribed me this drug, and I thought it was completely legitimate. And I started taking it, and then I found I couldn't stop taking it, so I kept taking it some more. And I took, <laughs> I doubled up on the dose because every time I stopped taking it, it hurt. But then I kept, I'm like, there's no part personal responsibility. It, it just in there didn't see. I didn't hear yeah. it. I, I, I didn't hear it. Yeah, you know, for a yeah. man who 
goes off the rails about like being objective and looking at your shit yeah. and owning your mistakes your and, mm-hmm. and you know what I mean all this yeah. I, I didn't see that from him in this instance so it yeah. even to the point where like I said you know maybe I'm being too judgmental of him as a person too because he is the type of motherfucker to use the word akathisia you know what I'm saying like that is him that. being if he had just ju- said but I the, just the fidget I had the worst bearable. Jimmy like ever <laughs> You know, you call it what it was. I was withdrawing like crazy, the way that he's and I talking kind of, about it makes me think that he was like Michael J. Fox at this bitch, like full blown. He like couldn't stop moving his legs. Like I get that. Like some people can't live like that. He was, just like, he was making it seem like I mean, it was like, like this like deathly like condition that he was suffering from. Like I was like, dang, I could. Eat. I was like, what that happened? Sounds terrible. They keep calling them benzodiazepines in here. I'm like. What's a pencil? <laughs> it's Valium. Oh, <laughs> what it is? Okay, it's Xanax. It's not biodiazepine. All right, I'm, you're not having ecathesia. You're having withdrawals. Like, let's be real here. Let's be. But I mean, like I said, that's me judging him from the outside. That's just probably the way he talks. And 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 this is still ballsy as hell because you could always just come out and be like. Well, I was sick. I was sick. My <laughs> wife was dying. I had some so we got that shit figured out, though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But we good, uh, so back at it. <laughs> had a little so. bit of the cocaine sneezies. <laughs> yeah. 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 Hey. But I didn't... I don't think that, like I said, I mean... I'm not the type to try and take something like this and, and start cheap shot in Jordan Peterson. I still think that he's like an upstanding man. His philosophies are ungodly mm. real to me. But... Um, I was just as the way I seen him. I mean, it was trip to find this I like out. Roasting things, but I can't help it. Yeah, I feel I feel that too. I try to turn it down because <laughs> it, it does. It will pervade but, into everyday life. I'll but, just be walking on the street, and be like, ah. Mm. You know, you remember how it was just like we were talking about that John Stossel guy though too. Yep. In a sense, like I want people to understand like where my platform is coming from in the sense of like I don't want to be the type to be like we should all discredit this man now because because people will extrapolate that yeah off like of oh well, what he's saying is yeah. wrong now because, because he, he was, was on, doing on ben yeah, ben yeah. And, it's like, and it's like well I mean he's still <laughs> saying things that are helping people yeah, yeah, like, totally. 100% that's true that's a really good point Michael and, Jackson's music but, still rocking it's it, still, it's still, 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 still good music it was still good Kim as a person is terrible it's despicable allegedly but I'm just saying sprinkle a little allegedly there allegedly I mean, I'm just hey, he was murdered by his doctor. We can say that. You know yeah. what I mean? He'd yeah. probably take a lot of benzos Dude, too. Fact, yeah, facts. Bring that shit full circle. Facts. But I, I, which is an interesting conversation. Uh, I may, maybe I'll take this. Just this is our last like, conversation for the night. Quick. But just how do y'all do that? How do y'all deal with the separation? I mean, I think we kind of said that out loud right now, but artist versus like the person like is the person because if you buy a michael jackson album a lot some people say you're funding terrorism like you you're funding terrorism? baby touching well it's oh. like same thing if you like buy you. things from terrorist organizations right, and yeah. stuff you're funding terrorism and shit like that and same so for this instance if you know anything you buy crack cocaine on the street you're helping proliferate the crack cocaine yeah. scene yeah. you know I, like, I think about um the personal joy that something like Old Dirty Bastard has mm-hmm. given me through his music. Mm-hmm. But then I think about the misogyny and mm-hmm. the homophobia yeah. and all that that's in his music, mm-hmm. right? And it's like, now when I look back, like maybe I would even like a more censored version. Like I'm not saying I want to censor ODB. I'm just, maybe mm-hmm. I just don't say the word or something, but I, I take the power away from that stuff. Mm-hmm. Because back then it was just commonplace and it was like these things that, at the time, people said those things, and they still do. Mm. But the joy that that man's music brought me mm-hmm. has nothing to do yeah, with, with the that kids song. that yeah. he fathered. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the crack that he smoked in front of his I kids. Yeah. Has nothing to do with the great stories he like the Mariah yeah. Carey story. Oh my God! Yeah. ODB rolled up in the studio all fucked up and was like sleeping in in the studio. They wake him up and he'd be like hitting a line. And you like say say one funny thing mm. and then fall back asleep and like, <laughs> oh wow dude just like he, he did this off. wild stuff and like yeah. I said there's a lot of misogyny in his music homophobia yeah it has nothing to do with how much joy yeah that you music just, like, brought me think that. about how many times a young John Allen mm-hmm. sang along to these songs and bopped and it yeah. just that like, oh, was the greatest man I remember like I had the CD yeah. and it was like scratched but like oh, I still played all the songs you know yeah. except for that last song and then I'm just saying like. <laughs> It just it, it was just too good of a memory and, and like meant to. But I mean, this is tough though because this is a lot of are we, people. Are we supposed like, to now just not like, like that's this what, is, what's the these are racist statues? You know what I mean? This is like this is the same conversation of like, well, that man was a slave owner, but he was also like good for the building of our country in some way, just, shape, or form. It's like should he be? 
tore down for being a slave owner or should he be lifted up for his contributions to society you know it's tough consume it with the knowledge like that that he did mm -hmm. like you just consume it i'll answer both questions on Mm. the first question i think everybody should do whatever it is that they feel comfortable with um Mm. And leave me the fuck alone. Mm-hmm. I think that that's what everybody mm-hmm. should do. So listen mm-hmm. to ODB and enjoy it if you want to. Is, if you is like ODB, stance. then listen to ODB. If you don't mm-hmm. think uh, how he raised his kids was good, I think that both of those things can be true at the same time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I think you can like ODB and not like and think that he was a bad father. Bad I, think, yeah. I think you could say that Jordan Peterson is not leaking deep enough at his benzo addiction, yeah. but also that he had some good he points. had some good points yeah. about personal responsibility. Yeah. Um, and so, like, that's... I don't know if that's just because I tend to just not really care about shit like that. Yeah. Like, where I'm just like, whatever. If I like whatever you did, doesn't matter. Like, uh, mm. you can do whatever. But if I like what you did and it's me, I'm about it. Yeah. And, like, like when I told you I was putting John Terry on the back of, the, on the back of that Chelsea yeah. jersey, and you were like, oh, man, but he's... He's he, he done some, really some really racist, racist shit. And I was like... <laughs> I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I was like, I don't give a that fuck. That man can defend all. us. That's Captain Leader Legend <laughs> no. all the way. JT. Like, you have a line. Like, I don't anybody give a has shit. a line. Yeah. Like, if John Terry came out and did the Heil Hitler salute to, like, tomorrow, and yeah. was like, I want to cleanse the world, yeah, <laughs> you know, like, you'd probably a... be like, ooh. ooh I'd probably get rid of that jersey. <laughs> I don't know if ooh. I can rock that anymore. Yeah, but, uh, I mean, allegedly doing racist shit yeah. while at the same time, you know, playing uh, football at a team with a... Uh, it wasn't allegedly. No, for the record, he called a guy a black knob. <laughs> which in England means the tip of a dick. So he said he called him a no- a black knob. <laughs> I heard he dropped some. Well, all I'm saying is while he was doing too. all those things, he was also playing with lots of black people, yeah. and they seemed to like him. And so I'm like, yeah. I don't know. Like I, the two things can happen at the same son, time. He can be a racist son of a bitch and son, play with right black behind. people. Yeah, yeah. I, exactly. Yeah. And I'm That's putting true. him on the jersey for the parts where he was playing with black yeah, people. Yeah, he did a good job. Now, he did a, it's just a really good job, it's just job for playing with those black people. It's tough for me because like we uh, even Young Ali was on our podcast mm-hmm. once before. I hope shout out that episode if. It it's coming to the air. If yeah. we ever show it to you. Yeah. I think that's the one that we have to drop for sure. It's a good but one. But anyways, uh, he said, I saw him in the story today. He said, you, remember, you vote with every dollar you spend. Facts. And he was like, it's not just like a four-year, yeah, like in money makes the world go round is what he said. And I was like, you know, I truly believe this. You know, I was like, I think that that's Facts. one way. Not that it's the only way you vote. And not that you can't sometimes just, you can you know, have influence in plenty of ways. But yeah. uh, I think that that plays a part in it. You help fund or you give energy or life to anything because e- even if you separate Michael Jackson from that, like he, you gave him more money and the, he'll yeah. use that money and influence mm, yeah, like his and, and, and yeah. power to manipulate those kids. And so like if you're buying Cosby show DVDs, you know, it's like you're, you're kind of in on for the roofies, you know, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you're in on it, you know? It's like, whether you want it to be or not. And and, I, and I'm and not saying, like, morally or anything, but, I mean, I'm just saying, just you like are, we talked about. You are culpable. You're a part of it. You're part yes. of the yeah. system. And you look at a drug trade, you know, in the way it comes, like, there's the guys who are, you know, packaging it. There's the guys who are making it. There's the guys who are distributing it. And there's the guys and gals. Sorry, the guys and gals doing all that. Guys and gals who are buying it as well right it's like being a consumer is part of that too so i think it's a definitely a slippery slope and i've gone both ways like you said like there's some people where their yeah. art just is too great an influence over me for me to like not just kind of look the other way and be like sorry yeah, yeah. well and i think everybody's that bad sometimes really to sum up <laughs> yeah, toxicity and everything exactly. we do. <laughs> to sum up my my entire mentality <laughs> is that i'm down with my demons yeah, yeah i'm facts. perfectly i realize where my faults lie yep. and mm-hmm. i've and i've accepted those things yes. toxicity as within my smartphone yes the terrible things had to happen for me yeah. to get these headphones i'm it's wearing true. or yes. these microphones like i i buy into all of that i realize it the yeah. history that's in there same with michael jackson mm. same with odb yeah. it's like it's part of the story it's in there like yeah, yeah. it well, sucks yeah. i wish you could take all that away I, I wish the stuff that came from our iphones that that made them what they are today weren't harvested sure you but know. if I can bring it full circle, every fish feels pain. Yep. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I appreciate you, Internet. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, jam up out of here. Yeah, we're going to get up out of here with the soft voice. <laughs> the soft radio voice. Uh, we'll see you guys again next week. Appreciate it. Peace.